Ooh, welcome to Thought Cups, coming to you live from the mean streets of Neo Chicago. I am Officer Kevin. What was that? And I am Officer Grant. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Kevin, for handing me the microphone. Here, you can Anytime, have it back. Give me that back. Give me that back. Thank you. No, folks, this time we all have microphones. Last time we had a little fun with the lack of equipment. This time we're not going to fuck around. It was funny. I would hate to ever do that ever again, but uh, that, that was a fun little novelty thing. I'm always looking for little novelty things. Yeah, you, you know? know, it just was funny because like it was even in the podcast chat in the Discord. I'm like, I'm on my way. I took a pic because I always take a selfie right. on the subway when I'm like on my way over. And then like I'm like walking out of the train and you're like, did you bring your mic and cable? I'm like, oh, oh. well, that's the you know, now you have a better setup there, but now we have like yeah. a worse setup here. So yeah, but yeah. it ended up working out because like I think the episode was still pretty funny. It was also like, all over the place, so it just added to the frenetic energy of just exactly the chaos. Yeah. Which you know, I pointed out in the Discord, but uh, for those people who aren't in the Discord, which you can join the Discord by uh, you go to the episode description and there's a little link there. Um, yeah. But I was saying that uh, you know, with the with the past format. Um, we wouldn't have been able to do an episode like that. So it's it's nice to like give it some breathing room every now and then to Oh yeah. To be a little silly, to to be goofy, a goofy guy. And also there's a lot less talking over each other because we had to share a single mic. There was a lot of yelling in the background <laughs> that didn't get picked up, but <laughs> that was fun though. Yeah, yeah I'd have to like shout I have to like cut my hands and shout from across the room basically. It did it did pick up on mic though, so there is like a little bit of just like this. Sort of yeah yeah and it's it's funny i like that type. it's a lot of fun but today yeah. we got our shit together because we have right. the one and only mark roebuck with us how's it going mark hey, hey, hey pretty good thanks for having me back not guys, too bad, How you, guys not too bad. um you know we have a lot going on uh we're going to be going on a uh well I'll say a brief hiatus after this episode so folks uh we're going to let you mm. miss us for a little bit. You're, you're going to be like, oh, I didn't know how good I had it when I was having Thought Cops every single week drip fed into my trough, my podcast feed. But we're going to make this one count because we got the <laughs> co-founder and head writer of Hard Drive with us today. Mark, how's it going? Pretty great, man. Pretty great. I'm very excited to be back here. And uh, as we'll get into, we are both uh, coming off working on a big, uh, big project for hard drive. So that's just like, I would always be happy to yeah. come by, but, but never more so than we, this. Yeah, I'm we have something exciting about. we've been working on over at hard drive. Uh, all the, the, the great minds over there. Um, all 296. <laughs> Name three. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, you got me, Mark, <laughs> Jeremy, right. well, Slime. Three. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, there's four boom. right there. That was, that was in a, in a single yeah. breath. And many, many more. Uh, but yeah, we got all, all 296 <laughs> Nintendo 64 games ranked and reviewed. It's coming very, very soon to Hard Drive. This is basically like Hard Drive the book. It is. I got strangely into... Uh, I mean, it's hard not to just like note the word count. Certainly when you're used to doing 300 word articles, roughly three to 400 mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Uh you know, when it starts to become the thousands, because we're, you know, what I told everyone, 296 North American released yes, uh, Nintendo yes. 64 games. We're going to write about every single, write and play about every single one of them. Um, uh, I said, you know, one to 200 words and even, you know, sometimes it can be hard if you have, you know, that sounds like it can be, it can be daunting or not, I guess, depending on how much you have, you know, like to say, but I think some definitely go over that and everything. So anyways, point just being, yeah, the word count gets so crazy. And then as I was working on it. I just happened to be reading something and I mentioned how many words the Unabomber's <laughs> Manifesto was. And I was like, oh, no shit. We're getting close to yeah, that. Yeah, I was, was going like to say, is it like 30,000? That's like a novella size. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like a good novella. The fact that he got a lot of like, I forget who exactly, maybe the, the Washington Post and USA Today. I forget who he got. People like publish it, though, which is pretty notable uh more so for we'll get there we'll get then, there. yeah then i just got to think we're coming for you ted yeah, yeah. uh <laughs> that's right and then uh then uh, yeah then i then i did uh I, you know this is a pretty wide range but if you google how long is a novel it will tell you generally it's fifty thousand to ninety thousand words which it's weird that there's a range i don't think it becomes something else yeah what is it what is it then words, yeah right it's still it also depends on the genre <laughs> but, uh, too like you know sci-fi will maybe be shorter because sci-fi are like shorter and like pulpier whereas like you know something that's more like classical yeah, will be like a lot more than that like obviously the count of monte yeah. cristo ulysses shit some, like that some yeah. chunky important War and literature yeah. piece and that's right that's right padding that word count 
Uh, no, um, but uh, yeah, so then we're like, we're past 50,000, like 56,000 or something. But then to be fair, there's a lot of, uh, you know, this game, this ranking developed by, published by, released on. So I don't know if you want to knock it down. I think like that counts. Two, that I, don't counts. Know, I, don't I, I went through a lot of work to copy yeah. and paste okay, that from okay. Wikipedia. So it counts. That's, it's yeah. a lot of work. Yeah, exactly right. Every every bit of formatting is like, oh, we should format it that way. Cool. OK, yeah, I'll do that to all 290. Yeah, so this, this was honestly, this was a really, <laughs> a really fun project to work on. And like initially, like, OK, so, yeah, very daunting. 296 games. And this was like this was your pitch, right? This is sort of your baby. Um, To a degree, but Kevin Flynn certainly um, uh, g- gave birth oh, okay, to what cool, we'll cool. say, because why not put it in a weird term? Uh, I think I think, you know, hard drive has done some really big, stupid things before. Wait, what the I- <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's 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 the idea of the that's Kevin giving birth to the concept, oh, right? I, like, the I, could, of, I thought the cat not, was I off that, yes. No, no, that was <laughs> I did for I a second. A I got cry. it. I got it. Oh yeah, beautiful baby <laughs> list. Yeah, you just you close your glottis yeah. and you just you know the the part of your larynx where you whatever and you just. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that was yeah. you though. I thought you were doing no. like some producer <laughs> shit. We don't like have you had a soundboard. Sound I'm like that Honest guy. To god. In, I was like, oh, you're a real I'm right like on that, that baby sound effect. Yeah, like a does database. all the sound effects. <laughs> yeah, that's oh me. God. That's my job now. That's right. Incredible. Once you get that Donald Duck voice uh, oh down, god. you can be in the next Police Academy reboot. Hey, that's what this show is yeah, basically. This is kind right. of like yeah. a Police Academy. I'm fuck the, Police Academy. We got Thought Cops. Yeah, Thought Cops Academy. Wow. Wow. I'm gonna say, yeah. Have you guys thought about going on hiatus coming back as a prank call podcast? I think <laughs> that w- these, I would not mind it. Not I would not mind it one bit. I think that because like every so often we do try to do like a uh, for lack of a better term, kind of like a gimmick episode. And uh, mm-hmm. one of these mm-hmm. days, Grant, I would like to uh, prank call somebody. Well, I think Illinois, though, is like a two party <laughs> record consent state, though, too. Oh, so man, I don't really no know fun. how that would work. We oh, have- so did- to turn it into yeah, stuff have would to be, be a whole like, thing. Uh, oh, hey, and by the way, can we record you because we're pranking you right now? And they'd uh, be like, no, mm, yeah, I'll think about it. Yeah. <sighs> it's too bad. That's really something that, like, as I've aged, uh, I don't know. It's it's like ideally you'd figure out some way to prank call people like that, like deserve it or whatever. And you're not just like fucking up someone's day the way that it's like funny when you're 14. And yeah, don't I, was, really I don't think I've, called, I've prank called somebody <laughs> since I was like, yeah, 14. But, hey, you know, <laughs> just just wasting people's time and do that with uh, or do that you know? with like congressional <laughs> offices that are like trying to pass, you know, That's really what, right. heinous bills. Just call them mm-hmm. up and just waste all their time and make them want to hate That's working the there thing, and then they quit right? and then you know these these people in public office can't run these offices without uh someone working under them so uh you know you're trying to pass like roe v wade and you're like uh so, is yeah. your refrigerator running no the opposite of that that's right that's right the opposite okay my bad yeah what's the opposite they call no. us I Grant, mean, the, like, ex- the opposite don't go ahead and explain it <laughs> no like the opposite like if that uh, was uh, you know yeah that's also like not a that's a, a judgment. That's not like a law. That wasn't okay, like a well, it was passed. you know what? Yeah, I'll take my notes off the air. Thank the phone you calls aren't much. gonna. I still I still think you can just always jam them up with phone calls. But yeah, like it, it just it just does nothing all compared to just like blindly dialing like whoever I get is just gonna. I used to me and my buddy used to cold call people. It's actually a pretty sound like you know when you think of some like, like mm-hmm. oh, it's not bad, not bad. Is like I wasn't thinking of like this is the bit. It's just like it's just the dumb shit we did. But we just call people like we're cold calling them, trying to sell them a car, and then the bit kind of would be like we just slowly reveal it was an awful shape, you know. It's just like yeah, it's it's not like good, you know? it's not too mean, it's not too on the nose, and you you string them along <laughs> just enough. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, like yeah, if you're interested, I could probably get I could probably get a spare tire on there. So I just whatever. Well, you know, the one like time that we were involved with any sort of prank phone calling thing uh, oh with the God. stereos on a live show one time, uh, someone lost their job as a result of it. So uh, I don't know. I don't. It was his fault. <laughs> oh See, yeah, that's, and that's the. No, yeah. this I, guy... would never, I would never call my work. Yeah, oh my God! No, we were doing a lie. You know, I don't want to get into it. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, that's better. smart. We'll leave it where it is. Uh, Nintendo sixty four, mm-hmm. great system. Oh a yeah, lot of sorry, great games, a lot of great games, a lot of great games, a lot of stinkers on that list, though. Um, Absolutely, and, and no. So let me say, I'm sorry, we got really no, off track. No, no, it's most no, of my fault. I do apologize. So, that's how we're, yeah, we're, we're yeah, now. yeah, right. Okay, lovely. 
So I forget, I wish I had a better like exact play by play, but there was just something like a joke about like hard drives done some pretty ridiculous things. Certainly in like our, our first couple of years, it used to just be like, oh yeah, fuck it. Here's like, I wrote like, I ranked like 300 fictional Jeopardy games or just something. It used to just be like, I don't want to say we stop being creative, but there's like a formula that starts to present itself. And it's just fun to like think yeah, of sure. crazy shit, right? And so as a joke, I think Kevin or someone was saying like, what if like hard drive reviewed every video game ever? And it's not even something that's yeah. feasible, you know, like it becomes certainly with like, more games come on steam every day than is possible to ever do. Yeah. You know, like, what are you even going to do? But somehow within that, and then even like, as you were saying, 296 is, is pretty wild. But then if you start looking at other systems, you're like, Oh, well there's yeah. 800 games on the, yeah. on the fucking Xbox or the NES. And it makes it strangely seem like, Oh, 300. Okay. Well, 300 <laughs> it starts to seem and maybe less daunting or something. And so then just at some point, then is a so that was definitely something i think that kevin had pointed out and everything you know and, and maybe that would be a good even like then if it goes well then you can use the resources on doing something three times as long if we think it'll be worth yeah. it but maybe it can just be something we sort of do you know and so then it becomes uh jeremy and i and uh, our owner matt and like the handful of us that are like full-time employees talking about like what do we do and i was like well you know, this is, as head writer, this is the sort of thing i can contribute jeremy writes a ton of shit edits a ton of shit does a ton of art does social yeah. media presence, all that as, as uh, I sort of, you know, it's, it's kind of like a dream come true, but also with that is like, yeah, it's, it's still a job, you know? <laughs> so like, yeah, so it felt right that I should, I could take it on. And with that, do a ton of the, take it on a lot of the reviews, but then also kind of serve as the editor and the, the chief, whatever you want to call it of, of the whole thing. Um, yeah. And I think you came in at, uh, you did t- uh, 25, I think 30, it was like 25. Something? Yeah. 25 so, reviews. Yeah. You played yeah. 25 video and games. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I, sat down with the, three. I sat down with the controller. Over the span of, played, I think. Uh, I, I didn't play every single minute of every single one of those 25 video games, but I did. I got through a good Sir, chunk yeah, of them. No, um, and like, I, I would like do research into them, kind of get my hands on it, get a feel for it. And um, mm-hmm, I don't know. Mm-hmm. just kind of right. Because like some games were also like a lot more bare bones than others. You know, it's like I, I sit yeah. down with, you know, and fucking all star tennis 1999 for a little while. It's like, I, I think I get it. You know, I, I got it. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. You don't have to sim- simulate a whole tournament with several and, different characters and, and everything. And that's oh, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say that's that's where we're coming from, too, a little bit. And what's exciting about this is I think coming from hard drive, it's not satirical, but it's also by no means like definitive reviews. And that's what I always try yeah. to sort of. I was like, I, tr- I didn't try to give too much guidance, but just be like, just like give an impression of the game. You don't have to like go down the checklist the way a reviewer sort of bound to like, you don't have to say things about the sound and the graphic. Mm -hmm. If you don't have anything to say, just kind of come up with like an angle or something on it. Um, But with that, I do think it's exciting to just go down the list and be like, yeah, damn. So every damn last tennis game and whatever. It it was interesting, like going through the list and like, you know, playing the chunk of games that I had was like, you kind of realize like I, I, again, I love the Nintendo 64, but like, it was sort of a dead zone for certain things like RPGs. I know it was like sort of the shift from like Super Nintendo yeah. 2 and 64 and then like the PlayStation weaseled its way in there and kind of brought over some third party developers. The N64 kind of like relied mm-hmm. very heavily on first party and also like Rareware games. And I'm like, it, if it wasn't for Rareware, yeah. it's like I do not think that system will be would be viewed as favorably as it is today. Like there's still like plenty of amazing first party games, but like the Rareware games were like half at least half of like the games that we all love i i think for sure and i think also with that came like a lot of games on the n64 list i've noticed when you get into like sort of definitely like the Mm -hmm. midsection what we've decreed to be the midsection a lot of them are games that are also available on playstation one in Mm -hmm. better versions uh which doesn't really you know it's like yeah the game's still fun objectively but there is that there's yeah that was pro skater on the playstation which is like so much better uh but Banjo Kazooie, Donkey Kong 64, Goldeneye, just like, yeah, it's, it's, they ruled and you could only play them there. So that definitely, yeah, they, I think you're right. Yeah, the, the top, on top ones of the are like party stuff added up to a nice, all yeah. I want to say, right? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it, right? Yeah, I do feel like you're right. Probably in our list, it's interesting to think about going down what would be the first game. It might be like a Tony Hawk mm. 3 or something, might be off the top that of my head. I had to be like one of the last, and that's somewhere the in the last, teens. like N64 games, right? I oh, think it's the last like, one, I had actually. that game for GameCube, and I'm like, I didn't even know there was an N64 version until I saw the list. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Also, like, a yeah. lot of racing games. A lot of fucking oh racing yeah. games. 
so many oh. racing games. It's like it's it, it's not surprising to know there's just a lot of sports games. And I because, forgot oh, yeah, about yearly the, installments. Like the it adds up. That's sports, fine. You know, yeah. Like there was like a even like a like yeah. a Nintendo sports lineup where like all these like. Ex, yeah. uh, I think Excite Byte 64 was on there. There's like a lot of the, you know, NASCAR. Yeah. And that's uh, like a lot of, uh, you know, yeah. when you go to like a flea market or like a secondhand shop and you're trying to like buy old used games mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It's like, it's all Madden. It's 100% Madden. Yeah, I know. Right? Like, like, you you collect older Madden. games, right, yeah. Grant? Like older like N64 games sometimes? Yeah. If I yeah. can find them for a good price. I used to, there used to be a uh, flea market that was not too far from where I lived that I would go every Sunday and I would just get like Yoshi's Island for like 10 bucks. And then you find it now for mm. like $200 on eBay. It's crazy. Or it's, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. A lot of those are just ridiculous past the point of, you know, there's always a point like, oh, it's a cult game or it's right. rare. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to find. I get that, but it's just ballooned. So yeah, mm-hmm. immensely. But yeah, it, but no, with the racing games, I never knew how quite many racing games there are because there's everything. Again, ones you might expect. There's some like Formula One shit and NASCAR, and, and then there's just like a lot of yeah, some of them yeah. are even quite good. What was it? Um, <laughs> there's just so many. Cruising USA. I'm a big fan of that game. Yeah, there's the cruising series. There's stuff like that that uh, there's a ton of. Oh my god, uh, start. I mean, I've just started like these spreadsheets for so long about it and stuff. And there's just so many like uh, arcade games made That's by another, Midway another yeah, developer that came. To Nintendo 64, among them those cruising games or Rampage like World Tour. Or, yeah, yeah all mi- kinds of Midway stuff. was another yeah, titan yeah. of that era. And it's like, I, I watched Midway, uh, yeah. a YouTube video by, I think it was like Matt McMuscles or something, where he did like a, it was like, well, I mean, it was like a mm-hmm. Rise and Fall video, but it was like about like Midway games where like they were like massive yeah. in the 80s and 90s and then they just fucking disappeared. It is, yeah, I never really thought about it too much until, like I said, I'm really starting to look at like lists and 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 everything, and just playing the catalog yeah, yeah. Of games ones I'd otherwise might not play. It's like, oh, these are just and there's like certain things, whether it's it's Hydro Thunder or it's like Mortal Kombat. There's certain ways like the announcer kind of yells things at you. There's a there's weird like quirky charm to it, and also Midway across. Games uh, was located yeah. here in Chicago. Grant, did you know that? Oh. yeah, yeah. My I know that. Um, yeah, with Williams, I. Is Williams a smaller company than that got? They merged I think they might have Midway merged at some, at some point. point. I, all I, some I, point. I know that they were in Chicago, and I think some of them kind. I think the remains of them are still here in Chicago because, like, the I forget the team that makes. Like yeah, dead, like their corpses are you know buried here. <laughs> and well, it's, that, it's hard too because obviously, That's, like, <laughs> this is like an artistic pursuit, but at the same time, it's a corporation, and corporations just sometimes just blow up go downhill merge you know sell off assets fold go bankrupt mark leaves you know that type of thing mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, then we Are lost the camera there mark oh can you still oh we can, we hear, can you. hear you you we just can't see that's you. strange i see myself frozen in the thing yeah I, uh weird weird well yeah while, while you get that fixed though like yeah i know um the uh fucking Mortal Kombat games. Yeah, yeah. I forget the name of the team or the developers who do the new ones. Oh. But they're still I, I think they're still in Chicago. Yeah. I think that they are, yeah. I think it was uh, our friend Martin was telling us once. I think that like there's like one or two people in the comedy scene here who like voice act for some of the characters. Oh, really? That's yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. I uh so I know that it goes back to can you guys you guys can still hear me I do apologize about my camera issue we right can now. hear yeah. you we can't see you can you like I can uh, drop your camera and then just see if you can reconnect it yeah I can oh maybe I can now sorry it was frozen on me for the longest time let's see um to my pro camera okay I there we apologize. go there I you do are. apologize uh, I know worries it happens also I wanted to ask you now that we can see you uh, is that the uh, any, the NES Lego set behind it you? is uh, my wife got it for me for Christmas it's very cool it's, what, was it you, tough to put together can you point to it and open your mouth <laughs> well, I do like, look yeah. <laughs> there we go there we go <laughs> yeah <laughs> fantastic <laughs> there's a thumb there's a YouTube thumbnail for you there Mark um, all right was um, it hard to put together? I heard it was very challenging. It was just um, lengthy. I think, yeah, it was very. It was. It, it took a lot because there's a uh, there's it's a TV with a stand with a Nintendo with a controller with a cartridge that goes into the Nintendo. 
So yeah, just very, very involved. But um, I did find it pretty much like I've not done a ton of Lego sets. My wife and I also got the Seinfeld one, I think like a year prior, which is super fun. One of that. Yeah, I I really I had to show some straight because I haven't bought Legos probably since I was like a kid. Mm -hmm. But that Seinfeld set. Oh, it's and it's it's just I think we both just found ourselves like walking by it and going, uh, all right, (laughs) powerless to not do it now. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I'm no like I I'm no stranger to collecting toys as an adult, as you can see behind me. Yeah, it's great. It looks great. It's just like uh, you know, the act of putting it together. I was like, I don't know. Could be fun though. It, I kind of regret not buying it to be it's honest. It's cool. It, it gives your brain that little bit of like you know, like uh, that that organizational structure. You know, I, I feel like I yeah, I like that aspect of it. But yeah, yeah. I also like because I have cats. Like oh God. I can't have oh, things like right. that. They will destroy because it. being down a piece can just fuck a whole thing up, and that is yeah, you know, yeah. can happen so easily. Yeah, and they'll just find anything and swat it. Like nothing can be displayed. Everything has to be meticulously. You know, put you gotta away. look to the cat's litter box for the missing Kramer. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But um, the Nintendo thing, especially, well, it was cool. But again, if you're in the, I like how everything is like ba- in in bags. Like you can kind of be like, tonight I'm going to do this bag, and it's like this little chunk. Oh, and okay. so you have like 30 separate bags or whatever, you know. So that's kind of so that's a whole month for you, right? So yeah, if you do it like a yeah, it's like a little nativity or we call advent calendar thing. Um, yeah. So that could be something too, as far as like you know. Religion. In, in, yeah. in there, I was going to say yeah. more in the interest of having cats around. Uh, yeah. One, you know, just complete the bag and whatever. But uh, it's like there's shit like in the Nintendo, I realized just in the guts, what ends up being covered by just the gray casing of it all. There's like, oh, I'm building a little Mario level inside of it that will now oh, never wow. be seen again. And I'm not going to take it apart to show company. I might bring it up on a podcast someday, I thought. And now here I am. But uh, yeah. Hell yeah. So it's shit like that where it is just like fun. The. Uh, it's like, oh, I get it. That's just for me while I'm putting it together, you know, a little to make me the Leo DiCaprio meme. And you go, oh, it's like the right. uh, the little underworld level one, two is just built into the guts of the Nintendo on the side. And then you just cover it up with the corner. So, yeah, stuff just like, at the Mario movie. I oh, there's that. There's that. There's yeah, that. I've heard you get a little heard. Easter egg and then it flies. Oh, by. You haven't yeah. seen it. I haven't, I haven't seen, seen it. Yet. I haven't seen it yet. I don't uh, yeah. I don't get to the theaters a lot anymore. Yeah, me and Grant and a good handful of our friends all went and saw it together mm-hmm. this last mm-hmm. weekend. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we reviewed it for our spinoff podcast, Fire Bros, which should be up very soon if it's not up so nice. far. So anybody listening, you can check it out. Two bucks a month or just two bucks just to listen to that one. Uh, it was a ton of fun to record. We had our friend uh, Josh, a.k.a. Sleep Science on it. And a uh, friend of the show, Nico, talked for about two hours okay. about the Super Mario Brothers movie. All right. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Good time. What is your guys? Can you guys give me just your quick takeaway? Uh, I don't want to spoil my review, but I sure. will say I re- I had a great time. Yeah. Uh, just because we went, they they recently built like an Alamo Draft House. Oh, okay. Here yeah. in Chicago, very cool. And I had never been there before. Really, really fucking cool. And um, it was just a good time. There was like fucking like a dozen of us who all saw it together, That's and fun. we got to you know drink beer and eat pizza during the movie, and you know. I also will say that the one thing that I like that Alamo Drafthouse does, and they don't do it for every movie, but I like that they curated clips at the beginning instead of just showing you like shitty advertisements and yeah, just like that's on this the hey, same shit before every movie or yeah, yeah, like here's a local real estate agent <laughs> and uh, here's the next Marvel movie that comes out or mm-hmm. whatever. They were just playing old like commercials from like Mario advertisements really cool. from the eighties and nineties and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, like, weird like Japanese commercials. It was like the coolest. It was like such a nice curated experience, which I'm very thankful for because I heard a lot of people who saw the movie, you know, understandably, were in a theater full of children. And I think there was maybe yeah. Unfortunate. How, how dare they? Yeah. How the fuck dare <laughs> was, kids go see the Mario? Movie, I was curious I about that because that uh, uh, not to sound curmudgeonly, but that's a bit of my hesitancy to run out and see it as excited as I am to see it. You know, like understandable, yeah. understandable. It just like thankfully we had like it was a, a Saturday night. You know, uh, really nice experience at the Alamo Draft House. Nobody was talking during. The that's movie. what I was going to ask. Is even like at a that. place like that, is that not the first thought when you're bringing the the? Maybe it is. I don't know, but just like yeah, I wonder if that's a more. Dare I say sophisticated audience? Well, I think like the Alamo Draft House seems to be like a lot more strict than other theaters. Like we also have like yeah, a music yeah. box theater here in yeah. Chicago, I think is kind of similar. Because mm-hmm. um, I mean, I've had some fucking bad movie theater experiences in my life, yeah. like really bad. Yeah. 
Kevin has just a lot of bad experiences in his life. He just weird. come up just, to him and just threaten to punch him in the are face. You just Charlie Brown. Uh, uh, basically, yes. Kind of, I, I, have, yeah. I have a lot of really bad experiences with the public sometimes. Sometimes I have very nice ones. Sometimes I have very bad ones. Not really a lot in between. Um, but the movie theater is no different. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of with you. Has yeah. it scared? Like, I know you went out, you know, you want to see Mario, but has, has your... Um, what sounds like maybe, uh, uh, more than one bad experiences at a movie theater. Is that, does that in some way make you go to the movie theater less only because I think that's kind of like where I'm at, honestly, it's just like, there's a lot of factors, but I do think that's one of them. Kind of. The people, I the mean, other people. Oh, I, I live very close to a movie theater. Like it's, I, I, I'll all say is I live very, very close to a movie <clears> theater <throat> here in Chicago, <throat> like that I can walk. To, oh yeah. You know, very, very close. And that theater in particular does not have, I feel like I rarely even see kids ever go there. Mm -hmm. And I've typically had good experiences there and it's like really cheap. And I mean, when I had fucking movie pass, I mean, I was there like once or twice a week. Right. I, 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 we were going pretty hard at the height of movie pass too. And I used to go to movies all the time. I just think it's a thing, maybe just like post COVID, whatever. It just never fucking, I just never got back in the groove, honestly. And then we went to see uh, a movie and then it was just like on a streaming service two weeks later. I know it's like a kind of a old man complaint right now, but it's like, I can't keep up Mm -hmm. with what that's going to happen with and what it doesn't. And I'm sure it's available information. But no, that's fair. I mean, it's also like if you're paying for the streaming service, you're already at home. You might as well watch it at home. But there's still something to be said about the experience of a movie oh, yeah. theater. Yeah. Like the fact that I'm like forced to not go on my phone. Yeah. Is actually something I enjoy. Yeah. Well, and, and then some nobody movies else I feel to. like are made to be seen in a theater sort of, you know, you have like a big screen and you have like surround sound mm-hmm. and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And I can't tell you how many people like when Batman came out, I was like super like hyped about it. And I was talking to some people that were just like, yeah, I don't know. I watched it at home, like with half volume and like, yeah. I didn't think it was that good. And it's like, you sort of like need to sit in the theater and like soak in the darkness a little bit and like have like the, you know, when, when the fucking Batmobile is like rumbling, you like feel your right. theater seat right. shake a little bit. Like those, those parts, I feel like sometimes you don't always get that just sitting at home on the couch or whatever, but you know, scrolling you know, Instagram or TikTok. Oh, I didn't even know what was going on mm-hmm. on the, on the, yeah, the whole time. Yeah. But at the same time, yeah, like I think most movies I do not want to go see. But if I do, it's just like, yeah, I'll go see this in a theater, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but that's a great tangent because, Mark, you recently started a movie podcast. I did. I did with my wife, Taylor, and I. Uh, we started a show called uh, 50% Fresh. Just uh, the the basic uh, hook of it is that uh, we just look at movies that are anywhere because i think on rotten tomatoes i think it's if you're at 60 or above you get the what's the good one if your tomato is certified fresh squished or not squished i always forget it's a really weird system i think i think the the full tomato is good yeah okay all 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 i know is the big green splat is bad right so yeah so thank you so i think at 59 and below you get a splat so basically we just talk about splat movies Wait, hold on a second i why why is a tomato once it's thrown it's a green splat and then when it's full it's red. there's a lot of questions that come up about why squish versus intact is good versus bad yeah i would think i would think see i just don't go on rotten tomatoes and then i don't have to worry about these yeah exactly i mean the whole thing is pretty and that's a little bit of it but i'll get into that in a second because now you got me thinking about these tomatoes i would think if you watched a good movie you might sit there ready to throw a tomato at it and you don't but you're like squeezing it and crushing it in your hands i think the squish tomato would be a good movie, but I, it's not my system. Uh, but yeah, so basically our show, just each episode is about a movie. Uh, it's often one that we like despite getting bad reviews and not that we're that hung up on bad reviews, but that's often kind of part of it is just to like point out the, uh, I mean, Hey, the Mario movie guy didn't get great critic reviews. Maybe you guys could, uh, I think, see that. you know, we're all into stuff, right? You grow up liking a certain genre and then it's like a critic reviews it and you're like did you watch this at two o'clock on a wednesday because it was your fucking job i don't think i would have enjoyed airheads either or something whatever i don't know i probably would have yeah that's um, like that's true there's something about like watching like that reminds me of like when i was like a like a, a teenager or like in middle school like watching like like black sheep on comedy central <laughs> at like two in the afternoon and being like they're just like something like uniquely depressing about that i don't know what it is <laughs> you're right but did you enjoy it I mean, it was funny yeah, enough. I mean, you got, you got the commercials in there, the but it's like, are, just yeah. something about like, yeah, I don't know. Like something about like uh, watching a movie during the day just doesn't like hit the same as yeah. like when it's dark outside, right. you know, you get the blinds closed or whatever, sure. the TV, glow the TV. But yeah, I don't know. For some reason, movies are always at nighttime. Mm-hmm. 
you know, mm-hmm. thing. I think they're all viewed best at night more than anything I think else. So. And just there's something to be said. It's almost like music of just like, um, if you have a, a, a genre or a thing you like, mm-hmm. you might not need it to subvert a lot of things for you to get what you want out of it. And for right. sure. And, yeah. And if it does great, that's fine. But if you just want a horror movie that like hits the beats and does it well or, or anything, you can just be like, yeah, I just want like a, I want a Ramon song. I don't know. Fuck it. Right. But, um, so I think with that, we can find out a lot of episodes and just be like, listen to what these pretentious assholes said about this comedy. Go fuck yourself. You know, <laughs> for there's sure. a lot of room for I that. I mean, honestly, I think, uh, I think that that's sort of where I fall with like the Mario movie also. Uh, cause I didn't give my, uh, oh, I'm sorry. You're generalized right, right. review. No, no, it's cool. No, uh, Grant, they have like, to pay for it. They have to pay for it. Right. They have to pay for it. But, uh, <laughs> as a little bit of a spoiler, um, like my basic thing was like, yeah, it's, it's like fun. It's like a Mario movie yeah. or whatever technically a pretty bad movie but like it was, well, it was enjoyable it's just okay. no it was like technic- all right, all right. like thunderstruck by acdc when they're doing <laughs> the fucking yeah, rainbow dude, road rock shit on. like <laughs> no sleep until brooklyn when they're in brooklyn like come on give me a fucking break they do an 80s fucking uh an 80s training montage to the song i need a hero I like need a hero. It was just a little bit on the nose. It was Kevin just Ward. very <laughs> derivative. Yeah, yeah. But at the same, same time, it's just like, yeah, it was fun. It was right cool. On. Yeah, it was and, fun. and like yeah. you, you know, probably didn't leave disappointed. I would no, think. no. I I don't understand how you could like. Yeah. What's yeah. going on in your brain that you would see the Mario movie and be like, I was disappointed. It's just like, well, have lower expectations. Yeah. And I don't know what yeah. to tell you. I just wanted to kind of make him move around. I don't know. I can do that. That was the best part when he moved around. <laughs> yeah. I just people are like, I wish I could do that, though. Why is he moving without my fucking suggestion? Mm-hmm. Well, I, you, but yeah, there's you didn't sneak a controller into the movie, your joy cons. And just kind of you should have that would have been a great bit. <laughs> oh, there's a pitch right there like little, like a uh, little brother giving the controller. Yeah, you think he's controlling the Mario movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're Luigi in the Luigi scenes. I swear. <laughs> yeah, there you a go. lot of yeah. dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just skip through. I this. Keep pressing A. It's like one of these yeah, Paper yeah, Mario yeah. games. Just skip through that shit. Um. Oh yeah, but um, with that too, it's like also sometimes uh, it, we're we're only a handful of episodes into our show, but it's also been fun. Sometimes it's just like yeah, of course something is exclusively bad. Like uh, a really fun episode we did was on the movie Gotti, which everyone you know, came oh my together. God. Oh yeah, we watched oh, that once. Yeah, yeah, we we reviewed that as okay, well. Okay, yeah, yeah, and I don't know. Yeah. did you get into like? And I didn't know about this. Um, Taylor does a great job looking up stuff about it and then a lot of times i was like oh just tell me like kind of on the air because it's fun to hear some of these outlandish yeah. things sometimes about the just like the dubiousness of that movie's connections <laughs> with movie pass and it's just all that's yeah, the funniest yeah, yeah. fucking oh. thing movie the only fucking movie pass produced movie isn't it the it's movie like, the critics don't want you to <laughs> that's see. right and then uh, <laughs> oh the trolls yeah i forgot yeah, about that yeah. the trolls don't want you to see this movie because right. it's too gangster that's right it was just it's all just fascinating i just thought it was like oh, oh some bad God. movie that got bad reviews because it was like poorly done and that's all true but then there's just like this other layer yeah. that was just uh fascinating yeah my favorite that, part of that movie is again like after spoiler alert Gotti dies we were talking uh, about like, if that's a spoiler that, where it's like that's just like life that's just uh that's news that's just wikipedia <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you but, can't spoil um, a historical like event. when when like he's in the body bag or whatever and like John Travolta is like still like scowling mm-hmm. as he's dead and it's just like dude stop acting stop. you're yeah, dead yeah. you don't have to act this scene <laughs> like you're overacting yeah. oh. and then like it ends with him going you know not even if you lived a hundred thousand years yeah. would you meet another guy that's like me yeah. and it's, it's just like crazy. this was terrible yeah. I don't want to it, and it's the Awful. most um the most generic like just shot of the Brooklyn Bridge and you kind of Oh walks into God, view and thing. talks to the camera. It's really something else, you know. With that, it's like what was that the the five burrows? Yeah. Oh my God. There's a, <laughs> the guy over explains it. He's <laughs> they all are like a hand. If you see how there are five families, not unlike the digits on my finger. This first figure is like he, Staten Island. <laughs> just okay, we get it. We right. Get it, we get it. And then he lists all <laughs> yeah. five burrows, and it's just like y'all have lived in New York your entire exactly, life. Yeah. Like you know what they are. You don't have to say them. Yeah. We know. We get it. Yeah. I love it. I love, uh, yeah. I mean, it was, so that's fun. It's always just fun. It becomes a fun thing of like, um, it gives us a lot of freedom of what to talk about, what to do an episode about mostly just fun movies we like, but then it's like, what's, what's something that got like the old zero. Let's pull up the Turkey list. You know, there's probably like a lot of, um, I'm guessing like a lot of horror movies at that range, like 50%. Yeah. 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 It's, it's yeah. A genre stuff. You just like, see it's it over a, and it's over. It's a genre yep. thing. Yep. You know, people really like horror movies or if they're not into it, they're just like, you know, yeah. it's like y'all, uh, 
y'all reviewed uh, the movie Deep Blue Sea. Yeah, our most recent episode yeah. as of this recording. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen that since I saw that in the theater when it came yeah. out. Um, I I feel like I thought that I liked it because you know back then uh, scary shark movies were in vogue. Yeah, but um, I feel like it's not that great because I'll watch uh, you know clips of it on YouTube and it's like oh this is yeah more comedic than i remember i know it's, it, it, it becomes like sort of like if i were to do if i were to go if we're doing like the four star it's like a strong like it's two to two and a half but i love shark movies yeah. so there's like a parenthetical third star because it's a shark thing and there's enough you know it's almost like if a comedy makes me laugh good like a half dozen times like i'm, I'm generally like pretty into it and can forgive a lot of it uh yeah the comedies are weird because it's like like, I'm not sitting around watching Hot Rod and being like, but the plot. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, it's sort of like scene after scene. It's like an episode of a sketch comedy show or something of just like, you know, you hope for a good hit miss ratio, performers, good characters and all that, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. And there are some movies, that, like some comedy movies that like do feel like a long comedy sketch and not a movie. Mm-hmm. And that can get to, uh, that can kind of irk me a little mm-hmm. bit. Definitely. Yeah. But yeah, like yeah. If, if, it's, if it feels like a movie and it makes me laugh. Yeah. That's all I need. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Without getting on too far of a thing, I think uh, like pop star is one of the best comedies of the last. Why well, you gotta, just said I hot rod made that. me think? Oh yeah, I seen it. it's yeah, just, yeah. No, I, I haven't seen Zwick that. Zwick keeps do, telling us to watch that, so yeah. maybe we should eventually. Watch we we that should, we should. It. Didn't they do another one recently? Um, the Lonely Island. They did. I didn't see it, but the Chippendales Rescue Rangers. I think. I think the non. Oh. Maybe maybe Andy Samberg does the voice, but then the other two guys I think were like the the main guys behind the Chippendale movie. Chip and uh, there was Dale. some other one I fucking forgot. Like it was, people were saying it was kind of like Groundhog's Day or something. Oh, I don't know about that one. I don't know. People are probably listening to this, like shouting the name of the movie yeah. at their fucking phone. Like I don't remember what it was, but mm-hmm. I love you think those people guys. Yell at us when they listen, because I always just picture because we don't like a lot of times we only get like a couple comments on the YouTube. We get a couple people talking about us on the Discord. Mm-hmm. I always just imagine people listening to this podcast in just complete silence, <laughs> and then when it's done, they just go. Yeah, that's pretty right. good. On to, on to the next one. Yeah, I now choose to picture someone running on a treadmill in a crowded gym, and they're doing the shouting thing. They're shouting the answers. Yeah, <laughs> you fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah, I, I that's like, I like I, the I Mario movie. The, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that's good for the. It builds up the you know whatever it keeps you breathing. If you I shout mean, while you're, it keeps do? you breathing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, based on the fact that I was you know working at a gym for however many years like uh it does track there are a lot of uh fucking psychopaths that just go to gyms and just talk to themselves yeah. and yell oh, and scream and just i um i tend to see like stray videos i'm sure some of it's on me like i looked at one once so now they're like in the in the pipeline for me but like when you see those videos of like people using gym equipment like what their idea of it seems to be did you see a lot of that is that something you see in out there in the real world I try, I try and avoid it. I don't think that it's like a, that much of like a real world thing, mm-hmm. but also like there are times when it's just like, I don't know. That's not like really like funny to me. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the idea like, cause pe- you know, you get injured doing stupid shit. It's fucked shit, up, man. You know? People, and, uh, yeah. you have to wonder about like, yeah, uh, people are gonna, uh, you know, there's a million different ways and different specific examples of, but yeah, just someone like using machine, it's like heavy duty machinery used incorrectly. seems like it could like seriously fuck you up. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, like, even just uh, I've I've just like been leaning on something when somebody like, you know, like pull in, like I've gotten my hand caught in like a machine once oh, and yeah. shit like that. And just, yeah. you know, little things like that or people like, you know, you drop a weight or whatever. It hits someone in the foot, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. The bench press thing is uh, fucked up, right? How quickly it gets. It goes like weird on you because like, of course, it makes sense. But when it's happening over you and like one falls off and then it goes flying the other way because now it's like. You know, yeah, it depends uh, if you're if you're here's uh, here's a little life life hack for um bench pressing alone by yourself um if you're bench pressing alone by yourself leave the clips off so that if you're going to die you just dump it to one side and yeah, then, you know whatever yeah. oh if you're God. in a, a highly uh populated public gym um you don't do that because then you like <gasps> hurt somebody mm, you know then there's but, right yeah then you just start to scream and yeah. Numbers dictate or just like roll the bar off your body <laughs> unless you're stupid and you're lifting too much but you shouldn't you shouldn't lift too much you should lift the exact right amount and so do you go you roll whole body or do you roll face go up no so like uh if if you have you know a bar right here you bring it to your chest and you just roll it down yeah. your stomach and you sit up oh so, yeah okay okay yeah 
I'm just imagining like somebody's like larynx getting crushed and the the Planet Fitness lunk alarm is getting uh, going <laughs> oh, off and nobody's alarm. coming to help him. Yeah, it's rude. Yeah. Well, I think uh, doesn't Planet Fitness doesn't usually have like barbells, do they? No, it's on a machine, but <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah. But what if? What if that did happen? Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, I have to wonder. You can't help but wonder. You know, I. I just uh, I just left uh, my job at one of the uh, gyms that I was training. I'm training Woo! at two gyms, but one Woo! of them I just left because uh, it's bad news. But uh, one of them, they didn't like glue the floor down. Like, it's just it's just and you would say like to one of the managers, you would say like, hey, the floor is coming up. Uh, like, yeah, don't like, you think that's a problem? So things and are, they would things, go, I'm sorry, things are like sliding around or, or things are. are like, yeah. Coming apart. Yeah. Shit. Like carpet, like carpet square oh, would just come up <laughs> and you'd be like hey could somebody like fix this and they'd be like no and you'd be like what <laughs> but that that's like one of the most common lawsuits in like health and fitness and like gyms and stuff like that is like slip and fall like yeah. improper oh, yeah, negligent yeah. use of equipment and you would go hey uh someone's going to like this is right by like the turf area where people do like slide pushes and stuff like that and the floor is coming up could someone like glue the floor down? Mm-hmm. Like there's an ACE hardware uh, <laughs> half a block away. Could I just go and buy some glue? And they'd just be like, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, no, we're not going to. And it's like, what the, fu-? it was like that for years. This I is mean, what they it, do with your money. Jesus. Uh, yeah. At some point it's like, I don't know, man. It's, it's always depressing no, it's, when it's you're at a job and into like, the wind. they don't care. Yeah. You know, it's like, this is and then they're like, we want this. you to care. And it's like, ah, I <laughs> yeah, guess, unreal. yeah. Unreal. We need you to care more than us, yeah. even though there's Basically, no good yeah. reason. We're just going to try to will that into existence. <laughs> yeah. I um. What are we talking about here? Deep Blue Sea. Oh, I was going to say, I didn't, I didn't want to make it sound like I brought it up for no reason. But the, so I was saying the thing right. about the comedy thing. So if that's true for comedies, maybe something like a shark movie. If there's just like a handful of be it kills or surprises or a big laugh or just that kind of. So I think with that. I definitely have a good time with Deep Blue Sea. What we were talking about is the sort of like it's a movie that has uh, really cool, interesting actors in like the smaller parts, like LL Cool J and Samuel Jackson. And then the main people are kind of like boring as toast. It's uh, Thomas Jane and mm-hmm. a woman named, I think, Saffron Burroughs. So it's a, it's a movie that has some some redeeming things. And uh, and I, I like it a lot. I don't know if uh, I guess in the interest of it's a, it's a, it's out there. The Samuel Jackson death scene is like. In a kind of an all timer, if you guys recall, it's it's definitely it's it's a bit of like the Janet Lee and Psycho of uh, if you're watching it for the first time, I have to, your your movie brain that's seen enough movies are like, well, this guy's probably safe for a while. You know, it's one of those yeah yeah uh, uh, things. So like stuff like that, I think is tremendously fun. Um, but you know, we're talking a little bit. Mike by default, Michael Rappaport and Stellan Skarsgård are both yeah. Famous. That's inc- that's oh, crazy. Stellan Skarsgård brings like a weight to you know when some great actors in like a shark movie. Yeah, and yeah. It's just like and and, <laughs> and you know, it's like all right, I, I'm just gonna dive in. I'm making. You know. I do sort of remember. Didn't LL Cool J like wasn't one of the last scenes him like stabbing a shark in the eye as it's like trying it's, to like. It, Kill it gets pretty hardcore like yeah like in that's yeah. yeah he he makes it through he's got a fucking parrot on his shoulder throughout the movie like <laughs> it's a real it's a real thing in the, incredible yeah, yeah speaking of our uh, shark movies did you guys hear there's like a new tommy we saw movie coming out called big shark i did i did not <laughs> know that. is that real yeah is it like, yeah, is, that like a, is it about sharks or is that just some uh i, I haven't honestly I, I haven't watched the trailer yet it's one of those things where like i fucking love the room mm. But that is a lightning in a bottle scenario. Yeah, you can't, oh, you can't yeah. replicate that twice. And from what I hear, it's like it's one of those things where like it's a kind of like winking at the camera. How it look it's so bad, it's good kind of it's thing. Bad. Which the room yeah. was trying to be good, but was bad. Exactly. But from what I hear, like <laughs> it sounds like a weird production. It's just like Tommy's on set, but the kind of the rest of the crew is sort of like working around him, and he's sort of like in the way. <laughs> Okay. But he's still calling the shots. Interesting. I, Which, like, that's that's funny. So, like, I, I do, Grant, I was going to say, well, I, would like, I would like to review that Yeah. yeah. Um, for Fire Bros at some point. I I, it, I do love that it's just called, like, Big Shark. Big shark. And yeah. then, like, I can see his, like, explanation. Like, yeah, it's uh, Big Shark. You know, it's everybody love. <laughs> uh, you know, like, just like, <laughs> you know. I can, Absolutely. I can, I, I know what the movie yeah. is already. I, uh, yeah, it's three firefighters must save New Orleans from a shark attack. Oh my god! Right there, I love it. 
So an entire coastal town, the sharks are so bad that an entire coastal town you see is under duress. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> I, I was going to ask you, do you know if they filmed it with film and digital cameras at the same time? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if he made that mistake quite yet. Um, I don't know. It's one of those things where you kind of wonder like what, what is like his mindset now? Because, you know, obviously he's got to be somewhat self-aware and I've, I, I've seen him like, yeah. a few times in person mm-hmm. because he would do these music or these uh, movie screenings at the music box here in Chicago. And I first saw him in maybe like 2010 or something. And that was very much like early ish into the room phenomenon kind yeah, of, and he was right. still kind of like, not fully aware of what he had done or what he had made. Right. And then like I saw him later on, I think it was around the time when the disaster artist was about to come out and he seemed a little bit more like uh, in on the joke, I guess. For sure. Which I mean, it's kind of hard not to be at that point, but it's also Tommy. So who knows? Right. It's hard not to yeah. be. And like you said, though, it is then hard to kind of channel that some more and do it again in, in the exact same way. But I don't know. It's a, it's a tough spot to be in. Certainly. Yeah, well, I'm, I I will see it, but I don't really know what to expect. Yeah. I guess I'll say this so. with shark movies, and I, I you know we were talking about this is the kind of this is the kind of uh, intriguing conversation you can find on Fifty Percent Fresh. I just want to make sure I'm it's probably a thing I should say the name of the show just in case. Oh, real quick, Mark, yes. uh, where can people find? The show? Oh, we're everywhere that you can find it. I think on the iTunes, on Spotify, uh, we throw the audio up on YouTube. It's through, uh, I think we get into all of the, the stuff to all of the major ones. I think you should be able to find it on there and, uh, cool. uh, 50% fresh with the numbers. I never, uh, I, I didn't all the way intend this, but we you know, we're alphabetically pretty high up on. So if you subscribe to us, I think we're going to be at the, uh, there you go. That was smart months. using a number. I never, letter. I didn't realize. But, and then, you know, I didn't know until like somewhat recently, but like a lot of towns, it, you know, if, if they have like a service, they might have a lot. You'll see like A1 hardware, A1 plumbing. That was so they could be fucking number one in the yellow pages. Did you ever know that? Oh, that's hilarious. I didn't think about it. Yeah. Wow. I feel stupid <sighs> starting a podcast with the letter T all of a sudden. <laughs> it's fine. Fine. I, think I, it, I man. just found out about that. But so I think we're pretty good. We're positioned pretty good. I think the show's good and we got a number up front. So I think we're going to spend There you go. But for no. somebody who just like searches for a podcast and they're like looking at a list of them. Right like, okay, well, we're that right one there. looks good. And eventually yeah. you'll come uh, up. Yeah. 50? Yeah. 50% fresh. Yeah, why not? If someone starts That's a good number. 20% fresh, we're doomed. No, but um, we were talking about with Deep Blue Sea, uh, the, the, the award of, the, the, the title of second best shark movie is wide open. There's no debating that Jaws is the best shark movie. But then, like, if it's not, oh, yeah. if it's not Deep Blue Sea, what is? I think it's a pretty fair question. But I think it's an honest answer, too. I just don't think there's a clear cut, like, you know. Fuck, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I didn't see the Meg, but I heard people like that. That's a, That's good a shark movie, That's a, right? That was fun. Yeah. I thought it was a fun, just kind of like, it's like it's decades Deep Blue Sea a little bit, you know? It's like you need, every now and again, you need a movie where a shark and some fun actors mix it up. And you need a movie where a teacher goes to, like, teach all the kids in the bad neighborhood and they all figure it out. You know, you just need these things right, every, like, 10 right. years or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how do you how do you feel about Sharknado? I mean, like, that's one of those, like, so bad it's good winking at the camera kind of things. Yeah. Or at least, like, it is now. I don't know if it started off that way. Right. Like it, those, uh, the asylum movies are just like the, the you know the production company yeah, who makes sure. all that crap. For like sure, yeah. Mega Shark versus like Crocosaurus yeah. and Giant Volcano. I think it's a fi- yeah, it's a fine line. It's tough where it's like I don't know. There's like the, there's like you know, I, I grew up loving like Mystery Science Theater, and there's probably still a lot of that is the reason that I've decided to dwell on movies with bad reviews of all things you could do a podcast about or something, right? But I think there's that difference where yeah. it's like the Ed Wood, the movies with heart versus the sharknado five it's too aware it's, it's like, like, yeah, I think, right 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 i know we, we've talked about it on the show before but i think like one of the most hilarious like marketing gaffes of all time with any movie ever is i think it was like sharknado three or four mm-hmm. they cast quote jared the subway guy <laughs> oh boy and it came out like right before like all the controversy came out with like jared you know yeah. going to jail and stuff yeah. and it was just like oh not the controversy about whether or not he really got skinny on the sandwich <laughs> that was like okay i was already pissed off about that I'm like, did he really get, you know you know but i'm not saying it's worse stuff, i'm still saying like, he didn't face the yeah. music for that one you know and that's <laughs> two things can be bad yeah, that, you know what right. i mean thank you i can't yeah. believe how stupid everyone was in the 90s where they were just like he just ate a lot of sandwiches and he lost I guess, weight i don't know what the I, fuck's in those sandwiches I guess the more was you eat the more weight you lose the more of them i have it, the better it is for me I mean, I used to work at Subway and it was like people would come in and get like 
oh, can I get like double mayonnaise, extra cheese, you know, mm-hmm. steak, you know, all this crap. And it's like, <laughs> I'm dieting. Right? What kind, yeah. I'm dieting. What kind of cookies yeah. was yeah. Jared getting? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> White chip macadamia. Uh, whatever Jared gets, please. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <laughs> well, if you remember, Mark, the sandwiches actually made him do it. Is that right? Remember he, he, remember he said that in court? He's like, he blamed, he blamed Subway sandwiches for making him, uh, oh, you know. Wow. Yeah. Wasn't, didn't the allegations of like his creepy behavior though go back to like when he was in college though? Yes, too. they did. I heard so, like, like some other podcast like was t- saying that like whatever college he was on, like he was just like the big fat guy on campus. Like, and you would like go to his dorm room and he just had like for like porn and shit. Any kind of porno you could, yeah, porn, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. just like really like filthy, disgusting, just imagining like the habitat that must have been, yeah. you know. So one might argue, and I don't know all the facts, of course, I'm just hearing about this, but, you know, you might say, oh, poor Subway, that really, you know, backfire or whatever. Uh, but also you could say maybe they should have vetted the guy a little better or something. Fed, fed yeah. some other guy turkey sandwiches for a year, or whatever they did. <laughs> I mean, I think that, you know, way back when, though, too, it's like you don't have like a digital footprint like you do now. That's true. It's just That's like true. just people exist. And it's like you look at like arrest records or whatever, but it's like. You don't really have any verifiable proof. And nowadays you just like go to someone's Twitter and just type in like a uh, minor attracted person and see if they're like talking about mm-hmm. that. And if they are, you know, you don't hire. Yeah. Them. Did you tweet about that <laughs> like, once in 2012 or something? Right. No, right. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm just saying. No, like, no I don't mean you. I'm sorry. I was doing I was doing like, that was quotations. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's what that's right, what becomes right, right, the question. Right, right. No. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. Well, do you guys remember the, like they actually they tried to have a second Jared back in like two, the early 2000s? No. <laughs> Jared, too. No, it, I don't no, it was, like, it was Clay. It was Clay Henry. <laughs> Remember this? He's like a firefighter or something. And there's like Clay Henry, uh, Clay Henry. There was a song yeah, for him, wow. too. Yeah. It was just the same shtick, just a different. Yeah, he lost weight by just, eating Subway. It was just like Doctor like, Who. They just had a new one. <laughs> yeah, there's a new one every time. Yeah. <laughs> he regenerates. Wait, guys, can I get real for a second? When are we going to get a female Jared? Oh, it's I time. I mean, really, Honestly, we're overdue. It's time. Yeah. That would like that would actually work for them if they did that, I bet. And for real, I, I'm surprised that didn't happen. Like some like a, like, a, like a lady who like, oh, I ate a bunch of Subway mm-hmm. sandwiches and I lost weight. And, you know, it occurs to me that bye bye, yeah, Jared. Fast food is very cyclical. The the shamrock shake, the McRib, the whatever. Where you know something's always bringing shit back, right? You just think you think they'd come back around on that. Yeah, maybe they're not because of I, the, the I, Jared thing. But I'm surprised I didn't even know they tried it again. So that makes me think if you're gonna go back to the well, yeah, go I, for it. I think like Clay Henry didn't like take, and yeah. they were like, and eh, let's just go back to Jared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. They tried Clay pre Jared downfall. No, there was Jared in like the late nineties, and then they also had Clay Henry after Jared. Yeah. And then like that was like I think that people were like, This is like too transparently like marketing yeah. or something. And then Subway's like, you know, pushed him to the side and like, and Jared, yeah. five dollar foot longs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how much they lined up, but it occurs to me maybe like the nineties into like the early two thousands or whatever happened, it was uh this crazy time where the, a lot of the conversation around fast food was what happens if you eat just that? And because there was also that McDonald's movie, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a very extreme. Yeah, me. Thank you. Super size. It was very extreme era yeah. of fast food. <laughs> where it was just like, it's like, you're not supposed to eat it every day. I mean, no one's like out here, you know, <laughs> none of this is normal. Of course. Mc- yeah. <laughs> there certainly are people that do eat it every day. And I, I totally you're not understand. To. You're not supposed to, but I get that there are people that do. But at the same time, like the whole shtick of the movie was like, anytime they say, would you like to supersize me? I have to say yes. And he was just like vomiting in parking lots. Mm -hmm. Just like, no, nobody's doing this. He's like, nobody's doing this. Stop. Don't. You're the only one living like this. (laughs) Right. Like, yeah. Like, even if you eat McDonald's every day, it's like, what do you get it for? Like lunch once? You're not eating it three times a day and supersizing every time. Right. right. (laughs) There's like 20,000 calories. Like, <laughs> that's disgusting. There was a great uh, video from The Onion. One of the best videos, actually. Check it out. You might just see somebody. In I that was going to ask. That's and awesome. uh, it's this is a horrified subway exec s- assumes people were buying footlongs to share with the oh. brain. <laughs> it's right. really great. Yeah. Uh, I love it. That's fantastic. that's a good one. Fantastic. And there, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of fucking bits in the video of people like. Like like eating half of a Wendy's like chicken sandwich and putting it in their purse to eat later on, and the guy's like, 
You're not supposed to eat the whole thing at once. It's bad for you. You're not even supposed to eat it by yourself. Dude, I went to Subway the other day and ordered a meatball marinara, and they just didn't add the marinara. Oh, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. It's supposed to be right there with it. It's supposed to be like sitting in the sauce all day. two things. And it ju- it was like meatball and oh, then man. like provolone cheese on top. A good, a, and a, that was a it. good artist will get the sauce there in the same scoop, you know? It yeah. Was, it I'm was like off. the most repulsive looking That's thing I've ever seen. Luckily enough, I had like just a jar of marinara sauce in my fridge. So oh, I could that's just, like, just wrong. You, know, you shouldn't whatever. have to do that yourself. Like, oh, you I got my have own to, fucking but it was, ready, at least. It just looked like uh, it looked like. Like, I don't know what the fuck it looked like. It just looked just like a. It's, it's, I, it's, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's like going I don't to know. McDonald's and like getting a, a hamburger and like, oh, sorry, we only have patties. Oh, that's okay. I have fucking hamburger buns at home. Well, you know, it's better than that, though. There was a there was a bit in the Good Burger movie. <laughs> if y'all remember that. You remember that? It, where uh, I feel like that's going to come up in your podcast, right, Mark? I feel like Good Burger. Good Burger. What happens is you wheelhouse. start to go, I bet that's eligible, and you start to have a hunch, like I think you even mentioned earlier, and you go, oh, yeah, that's that's eligible. That seems like a fun one or something. But, yeah, you know, yeah. it's also a little bit early where we're certainly trying to figure out what is, I don't know, like just like what's fun and what what is kind of, we've done four or five now, and it's like, oh, people, you know, it's like, uh, I think, well, like, just see what works or not, you know, I'm sorry, go ahead. The the cool thing about that idea though is that there's a lot of good movies that just have bad reviews. Uh-huh. So yeah. it's like mm-hmm. you're not just doing only bad movies. That's right. You know, it's not just like pure mystery science theater exactly. where you're watching like Santa Claus goes to Mars or whatever, yeah. and you're just like, does that actor have like a shit stain on his pants? Yeah. What the fuck is that? Exactly. What are they doing? Yeah. You know, Ex- it's like yeah, good burger. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Mm-hmm. We yeah, and there's definitely we have a good list going, and we're just doing um. It's 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 fun doing it uh, with my wife not only just because we're getting to work on something together, but then it just makes you know like we live together. So uh, as far as like uh, mm-hmm. getting getting everyone together is pretty easy and stuff like that. And uh, we Grant, did, we got to move in. <laughs> it would be it would make but, it. Wait, yeah. Let's ditch the, ditch the girlfriends and move in. It's for the podcast. Keep, Sorry, you don't have to ditch the girlfriends. It sounds like well, that's true. Like let's just like get, let's just live in a commune. Yeah, that's that's what you, you do. Know? Have a have a shared room and then just have the girlfriends go into another room and be quiet. That sounds good. Yeah, that's good, it's, right? it's man. It's man time now. That's, that's kind of already how it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. But um, so with that, we're also just doing an episode every two weeks just to kind of like, yeah, maybe one day it will be weekly, but just to keep it on that fun, you know, fun thing. So, so far, it's all just like fun, like grab a fun movie to watch, record a fun conversation, crank it out. Um, yeah. And then I was thinking in a perfect world, like, you know, you can't help but but think of the, the, the ceiling. If we go, well, maybe one day a bonus episode, a Patreon, whatever that looks like, maybe a show called actually pretty fresh and then you just do any other movie that's on the other side of things and now we've built a vehicle where in just any movie we feel like talking about that's a can good go idea. on one or the yeah. other and that's what i think would yeah be. So, so subway eat for us it could be <laughs> another yeah. where you rank sandwiches oh, if we can lock down that subway sponsorship because i don't think they have a guy right now right you gotta get clay henry oh uh, I gotta, <laughs> we, clay we got henry. clay dude that's right fine i do remember that song yeah, yeah i don't like, really because he like, was like very just it was like, like something a something guy. burgers and fries now he's down to a smaller size play <laughs> oh, henry, wow. play henry that's wonderful why do i remember <laughs> it's good, good good jingle writing that's why i forget like family members birthdays no but it's not <laughs> it's like it's like propaganda it's not people's fault when it works on them you know it's yeah. the same with commercial jingles it's just subway propaganda yeah. <laughs> really advertising causes all sorts of irreparable like sociological and psychological harm to everybody it is like yeah you used to have like you know back a long time ago when we were uh trying to turn big rocks into smaller rocks uh and that was all that there was to do you would like sing songs and like have like stories and like have like an oral tradition of like we pass this down and then what has taken that place is just like Clay Henry, Clay Henry. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, I, I remember every single commercial jingle from the 90s. And I don't I don't remember like what I had for breakfast mm-hmm. this morning. Mm-hmm. But I remember like what every single like Nickelodeon jingle was and yeah. like what every Cartoon Network like sh- even the ones that I didn't watch. You just know what they are. And, you mm-hmm. know, in a, in, in a movie that I have to assume got bad reviews maybe i'm wrong i don't know but uh demolition man satirically posits a future where it's all like that very safe sanitized thing and the radio is just radio uh old commercial jingles that's just like what people are that has replaced oh yeah that has yeah. replaced like songwriting and things like that and the people just like eat it up i always thought that was like a fun 
Yeah. In this, in this timeline. That's a future I feel like we narrowly avoided. A little bit. I don't know. Did we? Because I do remember, uh, that's with, is that with Stallone, Stallone and Sandra Bullock? And Sandra Bullock. West yeah. Of Snipes. Uh, I remember. Yeah. Because, uh, there's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cause there's a scene in that where, uh, Stallone's like, Hey, uh, what you want to uh, have a uh, sex? The old way. And Sandra Bullock was like, "Oh boy, do I?" Yeah. And then she uh, puts her uh, 3D, <laughs> uh, yes, sir, that her was Oculus Rift on, and she's yeah. like, "Oh," and he's like, "Hey, uh, why don't why do we do it a uh, normal style?" And she's like, "You're fucking disgusting." And that's kind of like where where we're at now, a little bit, a little bit. And it's a good uh, Sylvester Stallone is a good embodiment of that. I thought we'd do it, you know, the old gross way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's from a different time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know if I want your disgusting, like, gorilla body over me sweating and pants. Yeah. And, like, I'd rather just uh, put on my headset and uh, jerk it to an e girl right. or boy yeah. or what have you. you. You know what else uh, does a similar bit is the Coneheads movie where uh, I haven't seen it, that this, this, uh, Chris Farley's in this one where it's hit. He's like, uh, uh, dating the teenage conehead daughter and so he's like it's kind of the same thing where it's like oh i think we're about to have sex and she pulls out some weird intense not unlike vr experience and i think the humor comes right, from chris right. farley just doing like whoa, whoa, whoa fuck, mm. that was crazy yeah it's a good and those those coneheads are a little different than us man right? it's just crazy that that's a whole movie like i like i yeah. like it but it's it's have you they, were talking about movies i feel they, like uh, sketches just going long yeah yeah <laughs> oh I was my just, god like, that's exactly like, have, have they um have they done like an SNL sketch to movie thing in a while? I feel like they kind of stopped that after like maybe the 2000s. MacGruber is the last one. I that think. was probably the last one, right? I think it was. I and that so. was maybe there weren't a lot in that period leading up to it either. No, right. uh, no David Pumpkins movie. <laughs> right. No. Woman Ghostbusters doesn't count, right? No, there's always going to uh, be those. That's outside of those, those ones that feel no. like an SNL movie, but aren't quite. Right. Because right. that definitely feels like one. I think yeah. that last wave yeah. put the, not the last wave, like the last, well, I guess the last time it was a wave was like, in hindsight, not even the strongest run of SNL, but they decided we did need Ladies Man and Superstar and like, you know, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, and if, uh, my apologies to the defenders of those movies, if you like them, cheers. That's my whole shit, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, there are some bad ones. Yeah. For sure. And I, I even like yeah. some of the ones like and again, it just comes from me being a kid. But I would see like the Al Franken, Stuart Smalley movie on TV. And, like it's kind of OK, uh, better than it. Maybe the expectations are, are low or <laughs> something. But again, I don't know if that's a character that needs to be an entire entire movie. Yeah. And then it's like there's some movies that are so good. You forget they were SNL sketches like Blues Brothers. Yeah, know? I was going to say Blues Brothers. Yeah. It's yeah. like. That's such like a seminal Chicago movie, you know, it's just like the mm-hmm. quintessential mm-hmm. Chicago movie. And it's just like, oh, yeah, that's like from SNL. As well as yeah. I almost thought you're going to go a different way. And it's also a Chicago thing. But I think Wayne's World is incredible. Um, oh, it, yeah. It's easy to remember it was a sketch because it's Mike suburbs. Myers. Oh, that's, that's fair. It's Aurora. Yeah. That's Aurora. Yeah, right. That's actually different than Chicago. <laughs> yeah. Chicago that's land. Right. My Michigan uh, is showing. Yeah, yeah, Chicago. They said Chicago. The Bears, <laughs> right? Yeah, the Chicago Bears. I know. I know. Uh, Naperville, that, Arlington yeah. Heights. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm like when the people like, I'm like, I'm like, uh, like, where are you from? I'm like, uh, like the suburbs like by aurora you ever seen wayne's world like oh yeah yeah, yeah. fuck yeah um but yeah that that that's one that definitely uh i both of those yeah go go a little bit beyond the thing i um mm-hmm. with that can i can i do a segue did you know there's a and i didn't know yeah. this there's a game blues brothers 2000 on i saw yeah, I, I remember that when i was <laughs> i never knew that <laughs> i remember there was the movie right yes. Blues Brothers 2000 yes. movie and then they made like the n64 game i remember seeing I remember reading about that in Nintendo Power when yeah, I was a kid. Yeah, it's been uh, and I, I forgot who reviewed it, but I saw that they downloaded it on their Steam Deck, mm-hmm. and we're playing Blues Brothers 2000 mm-hmm. for the N64 on their Steam Deck. Yeah, yeah. But there's probably no better way to experience it. That's how I did all of these was on my Steam Deck, or all the ones that I wrote. I should say, you know, um, I I, w- I wish I had a Steam Deck. I would have because yeah. I I did um, what I had like I have the N64 controller for the switch mm-hmm. and the, you know a chunk of the games are on the switch like the nintendo switch yeah. online and uh but for the ones that you know i had to you know get an emulator for and i deleted after what 23 like, hours 23 yeah, hours yeah. I, I got i cut it off That's there right, uh but i i was able to link the n64 controller to my computer oh, cool. from the switch and it was like i was able to like map the buttons to everything on the controller cool. so it was like a perfect experience cool, cool, you know, cool. i wasn't like because i feel like n64 has such a unique controller and i know even on the switch even on the Switch, it's kind of like, I feel like some, it's best played if you can get that controller because it's so specifically made. 
Yeah, those C mind. buttons are hard to replicate with just like try and hold the joystick it's, up, you know, sort of thing. Like mm-hmm. I, we replayed like Majora's Mask here like a couple of months ago, mm-hmm. and it was just like a nightmare trying to like use the bow and aim yeah. correctly and shit like that. It just doesn't it, work as well as just hitting the C. That up controller button, was just you know? doomed because then like other controllers just don't look like that. Not only just the three prongs, but like yeah, like the games that treated it like oh, it has six face buttons, so bombs away. That's weird now on a modern controller, but like back then, anything that truly used the four C buttons, like a camera thing, I always thought that shit was weird. Like, I what do I need four fucking camera buttons for? But now those games, if you map that to like a second joystick on a Steam Deck, it's great. It's amazing, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, then it's stuff like, and so even when I like say stuff about Tony Hawk, it's like, yeah, but also part of the bummer is I don't have six face buttons right now. And that's just like, to be fair to the game, you know, like that's what it was designed for and stuff. So I think I started to speak on it a little bit earlier of like, that's what I was trying. It's almost like we get to hide behind the comedy element of it a little bit, right? Where I was just like, okay, I'm not. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I'm going to lean on nostalgia. And sometimes these say this game isn't that fun today. And that's an entirely unfair standard to keep. But we're trying to make you laugh. So fuck it. I'll hide behind that, you know? Or <laughs> yeah. Like, like some of the games I reviewed, like I was very familiar with from playing it like endlessly yeah, as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And then other ones, like, yeah, they are, I was playing them for the first time because I don't think I ever would have played NASCAR 2000. Right. If not for this. Right, and, right, right. Uh, it's you fun. Know, it's a NASCAR game. Did you have... And oh. now we have NASCAR in our freaking backyard in Grant Park coming summer 2023. Oh, no. Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah, it's, they're... Because the Bears moved to Arlington Heights or whatever, oh, so now what? they're just like, hey, you know how we can uh, make up for lost revenue? NASCAR in Grant Park coming summer 2023. That's going to be so fucking annoying. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What the And f- I don't live too far from there, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's also your name, so double annoying. Triple annoying. Yeah. You should get a say in it, I think. I should sue. Yeah. Someone. <laughs> Anyone. Na- Nas- I don't NASCAR? care. They got money. NASCAR might peel you off the little settlement and get you out of their hair. Hey, you know what, Grant? Here's the deal. Just have one of the cars have a big Thought Cops logo on the hood mm-hmm. and we're good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get into that NASCAR sponsorship. Just put, put mine and Kevin's faces on the, the, the roof so that when you do the angle down, people go, oh, what's that? <laughs> and then like one, and then one of the pit guys is like, he takes off his helmet. You're like, is that Zwick? <laughs> Changing the tire, yeah. Kevin, I was, Zwick would be changing a tire. Did you have? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, like apologizing for it for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zwick is our editor, Mark. I, uh, I was wondering. Does he does a lot of good work? Um, and he also he's does, a real person. Is that, when I'm making is that a he's name real. that comes from some part of his name or last name or something? It is or, his, or, his or name. Just his yeah. Name? Okay. You know what? Okay. He I, only has one name. It's no, just he, Zwick. like Cher. His, it's no, like, Grant, Prince. like Prince. His full like name. Cher, yeah. His full name is even funnier. And I. <laughs> yeah, we can't say it. But fuck, why? But it's out there. Like it's so but easy to find. We can't say it. This is fine. We're not allowed. How funny is his address? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, his social security is really really listen to this you never heard something so funny yeah. um yeah Brief, no. did you have any games that you played how about did you have like a favorite that comes to mind or an absolute like this game is just like the worst you know what let me i want to open the list again here because or let me open my folder here. oh yeah there was definitely some i mean i could pull up the data and say here's the highest game that you well, not all the way, because oh, I, I, I kind of asked for letter I know grades. The worst one. I asked for letter grades, I, so I don't, yeah, and did my the best. The worst, to, or no, the uh, two the two worst ones I played, probably equally horrible. There was one called Rat Attack. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really fucking bad. <laughs> like, in some ways, kind of clever, but like, God, it's got to be like the ugliest N64 game out there. Yeah. And then vir- Virtual Pool 64 <laughs> is just like, why? That was, um, it's funny, man. Like, there's so much stuff, and, uh, uh, it's tough to recall it all, but then you say virtual pool, and I remember just that you used the phrase pool plug in there, and that's... Oh, yeah, yeah. If you don't get a pool plug, you can yeah, always play it, virtual pool 64. I love that. That definitely uh, stood out to me. So, for whatever it's worth, I liked it enough. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's I read it and I go, oh, yeah, this thing, this thing, this thing, but that's just like... Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm like, I, I'm like I, I like the alliteration, you know, it's like, it's if really you know good. somebody who's got a pool table, that's your plug. Yeah. Uh, I think, like, what, I think the best game, like, I'll say, like, because, like, the, some of the games I played as a kid that I still like a lot, like, uh, Mystical Ninja mm-hmm. starring Goemon, mm-hmm. um, Pokemon Stadium, but the one that I played, the one that I never played before that I played for this list that I actually could not put down 
was Doom 64. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so I've much never played fun. it. It's so fun. And I actually, I rebought it on the N64 recently because it was like, or on the, uh, not the N64, the uh, Nintendo Switch. Yeah, that was the first place they I played like a, it. Yeah. They have a remake because I, I played the original version for the uh, review, but then I later, it was like two bucks on the eShop. Yeah. There's like a, there was a sale on every Doom game on the Switch. I feel like that happens. I, a lot. It, I feel like it, if you're a, a Switch owner, you should, you should, you should, I mean, no disrespect if you don't, but you should have all those old Doom games because they're often very cheap. Yeah, I got yeah. them. I mean, it was a total of like five or six right, bucks. Right. So, uh, but yeah, you remember Doom, Doom one time we were amazing. at, uh, what? No, I just said Doom 64 was amazing. Do you remember uh, we were at Brandon Kirkman's house once and uh, the party was dying down and he was just like, I'm going to play Doom. And we were all watching him play Doom. And then his wife came in the room and she was like, do y'all want to like do something else? (laughs) And we were like, no, no, we're actually very content just watching Brandon play Doom. And we did for like a long time. I mean, now I can see why. It's very fun. It's very fun. Yeah, it was good to watch. It's fun to um, uh, it was look at the list of N64 games because it is overall very, like, mostly wholesome. You have all the Marios and, you know, Mario Golf, Mario Tennis, just a lot of that. But there is Doom 64. It's kind of shocking that there's a Resident Evil 2 port on that system. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really shocking that they, like, made that work. And I don't even know that much about video games, but I know enough to know that it's insane that they got the two disc game on there. Uh, yeah, for real. There's, like, Ultimate Mortal Kombat or no. Mortal Kombat trilogy, I think, in in kind of a neutered form, but it's like there's so few truly, really just like violent games on the N64, and I'm not some like you know angry gamer that needs violence, but almost like again when you're diving yeah. through this library, it's just nice to be like, okay, cool, yeah, yeah. I remember like the N64 did have a good chunk of like M-rated games that like I wasn't allowed to play when I was a little kid. Yeah, I remember being like scared of them. Yeah, I can't. I can't touch that. Yeah, I think I watched like somebody play Duke Nukem. Yeah, and like when you you like rip off an alien's head and kick it over the goalpost, I was like, this is fucking crazy. That that was one of those like this is causing school shooters type (laughs) game. That's what my parents. I think they thought that you know (laughs) that uh that Conker too. He's a bad fella. I can't believe the attitude he brought to the N sixty four. He's like he's 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 a piece of work. We we like him. That was a fun game, but it it really like I think we've mentioned it before, but like it doesn't age. Like the the platforming elements, it, it's very clunky. Yeah, it's a lot of like that weird. I'm trying to remember. I didn't write it up, but I kind of played it out of a little curiosity. Just I would read all these reviews too, and be like, I'm sick of playing N64 games, but also like I'd read people's stuff and be I like, I want to fucking play that. Um, Mark, how many how many games did you end up reviewing? Because it was a lot. It was a lot because at some point and before this even took for like shape, I was like, well, in the meantime, if I just kind of start logging games, that'll be like a head start to whatever the structure of this looks like plus it becomes too you know we uh pay the freelancers to do it but me being salaried it does become like you know the more i do it just becomes like you know plus i'm uh like i said so those combination of things ended up me i did like over 100 barely like 105 or 106 by the end of it oh my god pretty intense there was definitely a week that i was like i'm biting the bullet and this is sports week and i wrote down everything and plotted like monday because i wanted it to be I, i i thought at first i was like okay i'll play NFL quarterback club 2001 and maybe a few days later I'll play quarterback club 2002 but then that's like so hard to know what the fuck if you're trying to and I don't again I'm not yeah. doing exhaustive reviews but I just want to like I should say something about the differences or something so oh for sure it, yeah, right. yeah it became like Monday every soccer game Tuesday every hockey game Wednesday every basketball game so it's just like I have a cool job but I'm also <laughs> strangely so fucking tired of you get to but, play video games for a living and you're complaining uh, I, I'm complaining <laughs> about the day I played every basketball game on the N64 <laughs> That that is wrong. But not even that's like and, that, and more so thinking about it's like working in a coal mine. And, and then and then not even complaining, but just the challenge that presented itself, we will say, was writing then nine or ten or twelve or whatever unique comedic entries. Uh dude, that was like the funnest part for me though. It's like some of these games, again, I would have never played if not for this project. Yeah. But like I like the more I did, the more I got into a rhythm. I think it's like I did like what, twenty five or something yeah, like that. I think so. And you know, like did I want to play All Star Tennis nineteen ninety nine? No, not really. But like, as I was playing it, I would like, I would like take notes for each game. And yeah. like, I, I kind of got into the rhythm of like, okay, how do I talk about this? And maybe like, you, you're not going to say everything you take notes on, but you don't really know what, like, eventually you kind of start to think what it could be. Exactly. Yeah yeah. 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 And I had like, y- you know, and like, I'll start tennis. I don't know. I keep coming back to that. But like, at first, I'm like, how the fuck am I going to write about like this, like, just basic tennis game? Mm-hmm. And then I found out there was like this, uh, like, uh, bomb tennis mode mm-hmm. where, cause it was like this hyper realistic thing. And they're like, well, we got to make it a Nintendo game. So they have this, like these bombs going off and the, 
you see these like realistic tennis players like screaming as explosions are going off on the tennis court and it's like all right i'm going in on bomb tennis yeah, you know yeah right exactly and there's stuff like that or just like you know even if you just hop on like the wiki page and then fall down the quick wormhole uh it's really yeah. funny to find old reviews of games i was kind of in that for a while of just like man game journalism became a long way where you used to just be like scary larry graphics. gives it a 5.0 <laughs> and a 4.5 for sound and a 5.0 for graphics <laughs> but, yeah but um there was um i'm trying to think like some games that i played like you know again I'm, I'm no hater of the n64 i think there are a lot of people who are like uh younger than us who maybe didn't grow up with it yeah. like oh it's so it's so ugly but it's mm-hmm. like I think there's a certain charm to the the low polygon look. I think, and maybe yeah. some of that, some of that's nostalgia. But I think even like a lot, of, a lot of younger people like still find it like I think they find it like more creepy than anything else. Yeah, yeah. Like all this like Super Mario sixty four like creepy pasta stuff. It's like oh, the scary three D graphics are not yeah. what they are now. Right, and you're right, and you do see. I know, I don't. I'm not that involved. Like I don't know that much about it, but I know like on itch and just kind of the indie gaming scene, like the PS one vibe horror games are kind of a whole scene, yeah, yeah. and that feel that feels adjacent to N sixty four at least a little bit. Um, but also, I think you're right that people do think maybe it's overrated or something. And I think even I, I get that maybe if you didn't grow up with it, it's like maybe it's like the NES or something where it's like it's a you could argue a sort of bridge the gap to. The next yeah, thing I, I would say it's kind of kind of similar to the NES because I sure. think the Super Nintendo has a lot of kind of just objectively perfect 2D games, right? Not that the NES mm-hmm. doesn't have its share, but just like okay, yeah, the, yeah. yeah, SNES feels like yeah. And then I think now after I'm off, I was going to ask you, I'm off the N64 and I've been emulating a lot of GameCube games, and it's just like oh, games did get better after this, but they didn't have to. <laughs> is is kind of how I feel? Yeah, in some ways, like in some ways, yeah, like the GameCube I think is somewhat of an improved library, but at the same time, like I feel like what developers had with the n64 to work with like they were like okay we don't know what this whole 3d thing Mm -hmm. is but we are going to like do our damnedest to get this right and a lot of those games like for example like mario 64 i think is a better game than mario sunshine on the gamecube i think the n64 zeldas are both better than wind waker on the gamecube which agreed all you know gamecube or uh, wind waker and sunshine are both amazing games Mm -hmm. but there's like certain iterations like the n64 iterations of certain series I think are some of the peak entries like the Mario 64, one of the best Mario games, yeah. Zelda, Zelda, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, objectively some of the best games ever, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, and easily some of the best in the whole series. Mm-hmm. I, you know, at least I would say, um, I mean, I think that that just like that goes into the argument of like a lot of art works well within constraints. And a lot of times, like as a lot of like the technological constraints, just sort of like, you know come up to date and stuff like that and you can do anything you want it's just like but does it feel you know like the same you know like if if you don't have those constraints and you don't have those things to those limitations to work with like Mm -hmm. you know does it still does it still and like kind of yes kind of no sometimes it is one of those things where it's like yeah if technology gets a little bit better and you can do different things like you can do different things and it's better but sometimes, like, yeah, I don't know, the idea of, like, Mario just being, like, this simple game where the whole thing is you just run and you jump, and there's two buttons, and there's A and B and whatever, and it's, like, that there's, like, this this ability to just, like, pick it up at any point in time and on any system and just, like, know what you're doing, and it's, like, this intuitive, like, mm-hmm. it's very simple, and mm-hmm. you can do anything, but also at the same time, like, the combinations of things, like, lend to a certain, like, you know, complexity and stuff like that that people can then take it and go above and beyond with it and stuff like that. And it's, you know, you get a little of both from and, whichever yeah, I, angle. I want to say too, like speaking of like, I, I also thought of like series that maybe peaked on the GameCube or not the GameCube, the N64. Uh, one of my all time favorite games ever uh, that I got to write about for this list was Star Fox 64, which I could not give an A plus to. <clears throat> and um, that is a game or that is a series of games that has never been as good as it was on the N64. That's so mm-hmm. disappointing. Aside from the 3DS remake, mm-hmm. which, you know... Remake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, they've That's tried. So I mean, like, it's some, are, such, some a, are it's decent. such a beloved game. And some are okay. the fact that they could never, like, live up to yeah. it. Like, but I also think, like, Star Fox 64 is, like, one of the best video game sequels ever. Mm-hmm. Because I think, I think that Star Fox 64 is a much better game than Star Fox on the NES. Sure. And then it's also a much better game than everything else that came after it. So, I mean, I, I, yeah. I'm old enough to remember when uh, when Star Fox came out on the SNES. It was a game that was it wasn't, you know, 
it, no one thought it sucked, but it was very much just like, look what your fucking TV can look like. You know, like this 3D, mm-hmm. sh- you know, so I feel like the N64 might have been able to like, the yeah. gameplay shines a little the, more or something. The FX or like, chip on the yeah. Super NES, like they tried to do 3D on Super Nintendo and like, it it just does not look as good as it's like anything. Like else there might have been a wow factor when you put the cartridge in, but then I always feel like this isn't a game. Like I want to play Super Mario World. I want to play like a lot of other games before I actually mm-hmm. want to play Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, and then yeah, and then, yeah, the 64, and then like, like, 64 yeah. was yeah, 64 was peak. I think there's a um, thing too, and it, and you get this perspective of when you have a list, be it 25 or 100 or anything, any number of games, where if you play a lot of the, you know, if it's if there's eight bad games for every two good ones, you do play some bad games and then you do play zelda or something and it gives you that fuller yeah. appreciation of just like okay like maybe it is just like uh whatever it was like you were saying about like mario like they took it's, it's everyone's pointing this out it's a very obvious statement but they stepped into the 3d space so perfectly while everyone else was like how mm-hmm. do we do this and then certain companies and groups were just taking huge leaps and i think uh joe Tolelli does a good job in his mario 64 <laughs> review on our uh, on our thing, which hopefully is out by the time this comes out. If not, it'll be very soon. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I think I forgot to mention it. It's uh, If it's not out now, it's coming out very soon. So check out Hard Drive. Follow Hard Drive on Twitter and Instagram because it's going to be out soon. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I'm in there. Mark's in there. Jeremy's in there. Our good friend of the show, Slimed at Garbage Main, wrote a good chunk of re- uh, reviews too. Really good uh, stuff Walker. in there, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, just a lot. Of, so it's it, yeah. it's going to be and like a lot of other very funny writers. There's a lot of good stuff. And it was it. so fun. Isn't it? I'm so excited to get this out. Like, I know I just sound like I'm in like generic publicity mode, but like for real, just like the different writers is different approaches and styles and and just, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, just I, like, I, oh, I wanted to ask yeah. you, like, how how is it like editing it? Because I feel like, you know, I had my own approach to like the reviews and like I, I read a handful of the ones like that, you know, were done before I started. <laughs> but like uh i i was like i was wondering if it was like was it as cohesive as you thought it would be or did you get to like go through the whole thing and be like this is all over the place but that's okay i think i i think just not having taken on something quite like this i think i was worried it would be like this real hodgepodge mishmash you know like thing but i think just once i kind of started slotting everything in i think it's cool i i uh i was an editor before i was a head writer and i'd rather be a writer than an editor I just would, mm-hmm. you know, rather be on my little island or whatever. And, 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 s- yeah, and for the record, man, like the, the, I want to say not to cut you oh, off, sure. but like the amount of fucking content you put out oh. is crazy. Well, thanks, man. Thanks. You know, and like it's, yeah. Thank you. I just, I, I, I just wonder about like, um, again, and maybe I've learned that it's not as bad as I was worried it would be ultimately is what I came around mm-hmm. on because like, uh, you know, I asked people that I thought would do a good job and, and, and all that kind of shit. And, um, yeah, so once it started coming, it, my my point was just gonna that that when I was an editor, I just always like I can feel weird about like I could write a joke in here, but it's just like I like to just let the writer's voice come through. I know it's probably like what a good editor would say, right? Uh, so that's my impression mm-hmm. of me being a good editor. <laughs> but, so with that, once <laughs> yeah. I just kind of adapted that mindset of just like, well, this is Walker's WrestleMania 2000 review. This is Kevin's virtual pool review. Which is hey mm-hmm. a top ten game for me, but I didn't write that one. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> hey, sorry about no, that. No, it's okay. And like I think yeah. that's the fun of it. And I will again. I will hide behind the comedy and say, I I, I did edit it with just kind of a flow in mind too. So if you're gonna read it and get sure, mad sure. that this Madden game is five spots ahead of Rat Attack, is that the name of it? And it's like Rat Attack. Like yeah. I tried to put it together with like short and long and sport. Maybe um, you know I I I really no, it, make, it makes sense. I mean, it's a fucking massive list. I don't think anybody's gonna be like you know. I, though, I, I, what I am looking forward because like when I, when I do have a hard drive article come out, mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, you know, I'll look at the replies yeah, and stuff yeah. sometimes or the quote retweets. And like, usually it's honestly, for the most part, like I think very favorable. Like yeah. I never really, like I, there's been very few like hateful comments yeah. I've gotten on my articles, but like, it's nice to see what people like get from it. But like with a list thing, like I, I did something for minus world recently. Like I, I ranked every single like mainline super Mario game. Mm-hmm. And like, obviously that's going to get comments. People are like, how could they, you know, how could he yeah. put Mario Sunshine this high and up? the other and thing, everyone has a like different that. fill in the blank there, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and hey, engagement's engagement, baby. No, totally. It's all about yeah, like, yeah. here's our opinions. Like, it's encouraged. We want to hear you guys complain. Yeah, you know? and it is just like, um, it, it it's a list. We are putting it forth as such. It is one, two, three, four. You know, it is, it's ranked, but it's also just, it's just, I don't know. It's like, it's a big, long, it's like a free book we're giving you. It's a bunch of shit we wrote about video mm-hmm. games and it's, 
arranged in loose order of preference or so, you know. No, Grant, I want to I want to ask made, you. I hope that you made a click through for every single post so oh, that it's God. just like you have to click next oh, right. and do it for all 300. No, yeah, just like BuzzFeed or whatever you used to quite. do. I think we went with a with a, 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 a hopefully a civil like 10 or 11 on a page to get to okay, like 30. Cool. I, I was wondering 30 yeah, things. Wondering. Yeah. Um well, I want to ask you Grant cuz I know like what? you're a big like I would say, like, is your Fucking favorite loser? Is that what you were gonna say, you bit? Well, no. Now that you mention it, though, no, the your one of your favorite consoles seems like it's probably, if not the favorite of yours, is probably the N sixty four, right? I think so. I think yeah. that was also just like that was the first like home console that like my parents allowed me to have because I was like mm-hmm. a little late on the SNES boat. Yeah, and that was the first one that I got as like a Christmas present or something. Uh that yeah, was that me in the video, one, right? me, me and my sister jumping up and down, screaming yeah. N64. Oh, my God. Yeah. And pounding on the on the box and whatever. <laughs> Great um, video. And then it was just one of those things where, like, you know, you're growing up. That's like your childhood going into, like, the early 2000s. And then, like, you know, at a certain point, like a lot of your friends sort of stop playing video games and shit like that. Yeah. But I have, like, very fond memories of, like going to other kids houses and being like oh my god they have this game and i don't have this and like my parents won't buy it for me so like when i got to college and i had my own money i was like i'm gonna buy i'm gonna buy gauntlet legends and i'm gonna buy fucking bomberman 64 and i'm gonna buy Mega Man 64 and just like all the ones that i like might you know because there's so many of these fucking games and then you get them and you're like this isn't very good but like i own it now and no one can take it from me well you know now that i actually this wasn't what i was going to bring up initially but you and i uh first bonded back in college you and i first bonded over uh a certain n64 game remember well yeah that was uh what was it episode 200 where we uh relived that experience no it was the 200 was the fucking call-in show i i forget was it the 250 one, i think it might have been 250 or something like that we did like a uh, back in the past, like a, a ten year time jump. The twenty ten. What was the game? Episode. To the, Major- to uh, the Majora's great Mask. Ocarina versus Majora's oh, Mask okay. debate. Okay. As in one of Where you, as one of you on, on both sides meeting it. Yeah, I'm more. I think I'm more on the Majora's Mask side, whereas Kevin's on the Ocarina side. I get it. And so that's yeah. been, uh, that's been, you know, but make, make no of, mistake, make no mistake. That's been a rift in the yeah. podcast ever since its conception. I could see. Both of those games though are amazing. Yeah. You know, my top, my top two Zelda games is Ocarina and Majora. Yeah. So I don't. It's like yeah. I. I I don't. It's on a hill I even want to die no, on. It's like yeah. some things, you know, some things about Majora are better, but. My reasoning, I'll just say really quick, my reasoning for Ocarina of Time is that it was like, you know, Majora took the pieces that were put down by Ocarina and Ocarina was just such a massive leap forward for the yeah. entire industry when it came out. It's a little um, bit like it would Tears of, Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom has Tears, Tears. Uh, I think it's Tears. Tar- yeah. I think it's a double entendre. T- no, I <laughs> uh, that would have to do a lot to be better than Breath of the Wild. And that's kind of like. Seems like it might be. I mean, that's the thing, though. The the, the trailer that came out today looks amazing. Up until today, I was kind of like, we'll see. We'll see. But that's also like, I feel like that's just like artistically one of my favorite things also is like when someone comes out with something that's so brown groundbreaking, it's just like, what are you going to do next? And it's just like, I like that idea of like, it is exciting because there's so much pressure to like make a good sequel and to make something that's like good and in the same vein but different enough that it like stands on its own mm-hmm. sort of thing mm-hmm. like i'm totally obsessed with those types of like what yeah. whatever you know if it's a book or if it's a video game or if it's like a an album or something like that you know like when it's just like okay pressure's on like you created the game of the century oh, wait, album now like our, our friend one. album gilbert album gilbert yeah, yeah. Like what's he up to? I don't know. Is that Chicago comedian Adam York Gilbert now. or is that a different guy? Yeah, no, we we no, it, it is actually, yeah, because yeah, we had him on the show and like uh, I love Adam Grant, Gilbert. W- no, he's he's fucking amazing. I love the guy. But like, I misspeak a lot. Grant for, sometimes yeah, for, on purpose, for some sometimes reason, like, on accident. It was like multiple times on that episode. He'd be like, "Uh, so album." Wow. I'm like, "Wait, what?" Jeez. Like, you know, album, I don't even know why. That, I don't people know don't even call him albums anymore. <laughs> yeah. They call him Adams. <laughs> I mean, I do. I do in the same sense that uh, people like, you know, uh, pretentious people call, uh, you know, movies, films. Yeah. Oh, I still, I still like, talk about not, albums. Yeah, for, for sure. It's not, yeah, it's, a, it's an album. A if it's album. like a cohesive, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. if it's a cohesive 100%. project, yeah. not just like, oh, you put out a CD, like, oh, cool. Right. Who cares? But no, Grant, what, what I, what I did want to ask you, though, uh, yeah. leading up to that, 
if you can think off the top of your head, what are your top five Nintendo 64 yeah. games? And, and I can um, I can spill the top five on the list. Ooh, yeah. I want to hear I want to hear Grant, and I want to see if those match up yeah. exactly. Well, I, I can't I can't like think of all the games that I have like off the top of my head. I wish you would have prepped me. Oh yeah, this, because this, you could easily, this is a cause yeah. of serious deliberation. You could easily well, say Grant, five, imagine and all then your you're going to spend cartridges a day. in your head. You're going to be like, I'm I should have said this. To, I think, <laughs> yeah. He's going. He's going for the box. He's going for the box. Okay. Okay. Well, you know what? While you know, while he's away, I don't know if he can hear us. No, he can. I was going to say. I still have headphones. <laughs> in. Okay, I was going to say spill the tea, but no. Um, I don't know. What are the ones that come to your mind right away? The ones that you're like, oh, I got to put that on my list. So Maj- Majora's Mask is pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you? You think you might put both Zeldas in the top five? Just, just a maybe. I would say both Zeldas belong I think it's there. Fair. Yeah. I, think it's fair. I will say. I feel like people have a, people have a problem with that when you put the same se- like with the same of a same se- like the entry of a same series. Well, it's like, if we're both good. fucking good, right. like who cares, yeah, bro? I love yeah. I love football. So like all four versions of NFL Blitz and then Madden 2002. That's my list. That's, oh, that, that's not my list. That's not my list. Oh, Donkey dude. Kong 64 is up there. Oh, yeah. there we go. Um, One of the sickest cartridges too. Just on a on an yes, aesthetic. Banana, yeah, maybe uh, the best one. Maybe the best one. And also, I had. I also got this as like the package deal with like the green Nintendo, so it like matches oh, all nicey nicey. Yeah. That's nice, dude. Why have they not brought that back? Could you imagine that, oh, like, yeah, yeah. that technology, the the colored, the, the clear, crystal, yeah. purple stuff. Um, they have those in uh those like uh, knockoff Game Boy ones yeah. coming mm-hmm. atomic purple, the RGX right. thirty five XX yeah. or whatever the fuck. I want to get one of those. Um, probably those Mario 64. Um, I don't know. Maybe this is easier than I thought because it's just like the most popular ones. Like, uh, I hate to cop out and just say like Banjo Kazooie, but I guess that that's I mean, up that's there. A, that's a, for me, that's a 10 out of 10. I, 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 I played yeah. it again like a yeah. year ago and I fucking love it. I think when I look at what we have in our list and like, I do, I just love them. I love a lot of these games, but like there's a drop. Once yeah, you get yeah. past like tw- atomic purple, right? Hey, now that's, that's lovely. Yeah. Love that. Once you get to like, I don't know on the list, 20 30 40 somewhere there's like a drop off you know so it's like when you start talking about the best five or ten there's only i you know you can have your own personal taste of course but i don't think you consider it's not like considering the best super nintendo game or something that would be like maybe more daunting i don't know oh shit i almost like paper mario also has to be up there too that's like yeah i will say that the top 10 or 15 is like crowded i will tell you can i can i tell you our top five yeah yeah Yeah. we went golden eye number one and again, a lot of Golden these, Eyes number one. Yeah, Golden Eyes number one. And Damn. I was reading our list, and I will say, every tenth review mentions Golden Eye. I think it became clear to me while editing it. I I, I know I mentioned it the once. Impact on, like, this like, was a t- attempt at Golden Eye. You just can't. Or, and and then I think it's ultimate. Oh, is it kidding? Um, it, it might be like the ultimate. You had to be there thing or something. And I know that could be like, yeah, I could just easily like say that doesn't matter and it shouldn't make it number one or something. But the four player, yeah. everything else, and then again, um. Uh, Walker wrote an amazing thing. So I just think that is like, mm-hmm. that helps too, you know? Um, Mario at two, Zelda uh, at, at three, Oshrena, Ocarina, um, fuck me. Um, I think four was Donkey Kong, five. I want to say really quick though, but the, the Donkey Kong 64, I was happy to see because I, I think I read, um, was it Chandler? Chandler and Chandler wrote review? it in a way that you're like, if you're unsure about it, read what he wrote and tell, you know, like, that's it's, what it's, I, it's, I, I yeah. saw that and I liked it because like, my, by no means, and I, I think we've talked about this on the show before, Donkey Kong 64 is a very messy bitch of a game. <laughs> it is, it is. You know? It's big and it's open, like, it's, and it's, it's indicative of it's that bloated. whole, like, we're, we're figuring out how exactly best to do this. Yeah, and it's like, but, like, what he hit on so well is, like, there was an era of time where, like, the late N64 is all about, like, more is better, big is better. Yeah, it was all about right. this, like, maximalist game design of, like, let's put as much as we fucking can in here. Yeah. And DK64 like is great in that way and i think it honestly i think it's gotten unfair rap on the internet for a while lately mm-hmm. because like one or two like popular youtube people like were like this game is actually bad and then all the comments yeah like, like the uh drink a beer play a game guys mm-hmm. <laughs> that was okay well you know they're i think jim liked it i don't know Wh- whoever whoever brian does the, shit on the, i know brian didn't like it. whoever like controls the twitter account i feel like i get an account like a once a month back and forth about dk64 <laughs> yeah i think i think that is jim so maybe maybe they both hate it i, I watched God the damn. review of it a while back but i just want to say 
I appreciate that DK64 is getting the love that it does, yeah. in fact, deserve. I think it's a pretty solid game. I mean, yeah, there's like some like the beaver madness or whatever. Like uh, some of that shit is like, oh, my God, this shit. But like, I don't know. It, it's still like the fact that they put so much into the game is like, yeah. And that's also like, I think that that was like a... Uh, because isn't that when they added like the little expansion thing that went into the cartridge, yeah, that, uh, the, yeah, the expansion yeah. cartridge, and they were just like, "Fuck it, make everything big, add ten more levels," you yeah. know? And, yeah. and it didn't feel so many games feel like a little, even if it's a big spacious world you're running around in, it feels empty. In Donkey Kong, much like Zelda or something, it actually feels like you're within a world. I think, yeah, the way other yeah. games, that's where that like odd offness it can be like unsettling or creepy or something if you let it. Not to mention all these games are not all these games. So many of the games are foggy because they can't like load the graphics. So uh, <laughs> you know everything's foggy. dude. That's like <clears throat> there's something like I, I I liked about that when I was a kid because it has this mysterious aura mm-hmm. to it. And one of the games I reviewed, I think it was a uh, San Francisco Rush 2049. Mm-hmm. Um, there is like a, a a fog filter. Like you can adjust the fog. It's like, do you want to have a f- turn up the fog? And I'm like, I thought that was like a bug, not a yeah, feature. Yeah, right, right, right. We got more fog if you want it. <laughs> yeah, it's like bring it on. Yeah. And then again, I'd never played it, but I, I played the. I had it on my uh, PlayStation One years ago. But Ridge Racer '64 is then a game that it feels like you can see for miles, and there's like planes flying around in the air, and it's like, oh, you guys are showing off, you post expansion pack fuckers. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It's not fair. If you were here earlier, we wouldn't be able to see jack shit. Yeah, right. Like uh. Buck Bumble. I pl- I played that again for the reviews. I yeah. had that with when I was a kid. I didn't like it when I was a kid. Yeah. Played it as an adult. Didn't like it now. Is that the one you talk but about like that, selling? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. like the one of the only games I've ever sold in my whole life because I tend to hold on to yeah. games. But Buck Bumble didn't that make was the cut. like <laughs> no, no. And it was like I needed like I'm like oh I can make like twenty bucks if I sell this. And as as, as a kid, twenty bucks is a lot of money. Oh for sure. So for sure. It was like but like the draw distance in that game is so awful. Yeah. Like, it's like you can see, like, maybe like 10 to 15 feet in front of the character at all times. Yeah. It's just depressing. It is. And it, it sometimes it's like it goes from being, you notice it to just like, this is an obstacle. I'm trying to play. And I, it's like noticeably yeah. distracting. I can't, I'm driving a car and the foreground is loading, you know, so uh, last minute that I can't even like hit my turn that well or something. Anyway. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Some <laughs> of the games, not so. So we had uh, a golden eye, oh, Mario 64, Goldeneye. Ocarina of time, right. DK 64. And then uh, this might be one of the boldest things, certainly in the top stuff. And I don't think it's that bold. It'll, it might have some controversy, but WWF, no mercy. You know, I remember seeing that very high up, very up there. Yeah. Uh, you know, if it's not your shit, then who gives a fuck? I understand completely. It's I a hard drive. Pretty review. Fun those, that is held then. up as, as a, like, like, those that like the rest that's like the everyone's favorite wrestling game or like when AEW yeah, uh, yeah. is developing a game that may or may not ever come out but that's the thing that was like we're gonna make it like old no mercy and there's just not too many like you know again much like old night you start to realize like oh it actually like an impact or a lasting impression or something and mm-hmm. and then again yeah. then i think then the convincing copy came in on it and go okay okay we're going you know then I think, and I'm going to lose the order, but rounding out the top 10, I'll just fire off real quick. Some things like Perfect Dark, Banjo-Kazooie, um, Mario Tennis, Star Fox 64, I think. Oh, Mario Tennis is up there? Yeah, I think it made it, num- wow. I think it made it number 10. And again, I think Joe Talili made a thing about like, you know, when you introduce, is that when introduced introduce Waluigi? I don't want to fuck that up, but that's right. It, yeah. Yes, it so was. So it's like, when you yeah. introduce Waluigi, yeah. you make it into the top 10. So like, yeah, fuck it, <laughs> a, fuck it, a, man, let's go, you know? Yeah, uh, it's going in. Yeah, and then um, maybe Diddy Kong Racing is another one I put up pretty, that, and I, I put up, that's like, great, we ended up, I ended up uh, agreeing with the writers that it should go up pretty high. Uh, and that's when I yeah. never played, and it was just like, a few other people mentioned it, and not only did it come in with a strong review, it made me, that's when I was talking about, like, okay, I'm going to play this. Diddy Kong Racing is fun mm-hmm. as hell. That's not news, but just if no one's played yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. In some ways, better than Mario Kart 64. I would entertain that it's, argument. It, we have it higher on the list, yeah. so in that sense, I, if I'm standing behind this, go. I have to say it's Definitive. better. Yes, if I want to, if I want to stand. I there. also think Mario Kart 64 is a little bit like overrated. Yeah. Like it's it's who's rating these things, but like <laughs> I do think that like you know, um, I don't. I, I feel like the more they kept putting out, the better it yeah. kept getting. You know, it was just kind of like know. what you're saying. It's like the, I the, go the back and play it. It feels very rudimentary. Like, I feel know? like Double Dash is not as good as 64. It's the same thing of like the N64 ed- iteration mm-hmm. is not or it is better than the GameCube one. But one thing I want to mention really quick, not to interrupt you for the fifteenth time, but right. like I remember. I actually read something today about like uh, it was like I found this like old Nintendo Power excerpt and I saw they were like asking about like Metroid 64. Like, is there any chance or any uh, any plans for a Metroid 64? And they were like, no, not at this time. We don't have any plans for it. And I'm thinking back, like, what would that have been like? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, you know what? 
I think that it's probably good they waited for the GameCube for that it one. It might have been, Because yeah. Metroid Prime is so amazing. Yeah. And, like, I imagine, like, that kind of game on the N64 for Metroid, and I'm just like, ah, that just, like, does not sound like it would be as good. Yeah. I mean, it could have gone in a million directions, so we won't know for sure, but it's just, like, I kind of think, like, it might have turned out, like, Castlevania 64, you know, to make an exactly. obvious kind of exactly. maybe scenario, uh, which, you know, it survived. It's Castlevania at large, but that's certainly not mm. its highest point it's time on the system so yeah you're probably right people that do not like that game might have been people a, do not might like have it. been a blemish that was something i thought about i wonder if you have any thoughts on this and and grant too since you're uh familiar with it too, uh, the library you know uh at some point i couldn't help but think like man like uh the games that aren't on n64 you know it's like there's no metroid game or there was so like after i you know i just feel like i was playing a certain yeah, yeah. earthbound yeah. where's where's earthbound uh, 64 almost, right, right, almost almost it was on there like yeah i guess i remember like as a kid like i was super excited for earthbound 64 mm-hmm. i had no idea what earthbound was it was like back in like 1997 i had nintendo power i'm like yeah. this looks like a crazy 3d game yeah. and then yeah eventually you know it'd be for the game boy advance which was ultimately better uh but yeah no a lot of series did skip the 64 yeah um metroid fire emblem yeah fire emblem after uh, i never thought about it but when i was writing about mortal kombat trilogy and mortal kombat 4 it's uh there's capcom games but there's no street fighter games on the n64 oh yeah you're right yeah there's no i mean has there been i think street fighter kind of jumped ship because yeah it's not a gamecube or anything really right no no right. that's not really i think maybe like on switch there's like an eight whatever it's an hd remaster of street fighter i, have, I don't even count that. i have no. street fighter 4 on my 3ds i was just gonna say yeah the 3ds like one of the weirdest like games on 3ds <laughs> was the launch title street yeah. fighter 4 so you can press the touch screen and do con- cr- i got it on sale it's so crazy it was worth it but it's weird i don't know yeah uh i mean obviously i've never like, been so good at a fighting game i'll put it that way <laughs> yeah just tap the fucking Dude. big button yeah. I'm really uh, good at this god what else like like uh final fantasy 7 was supposed to be on the n64 oh, and then yeah and then sony was like we'll let you do whatever you want and give you like multiple discs for extra space and then like Nintendo was being like, uh, I don't know, with, with a firm hand over Squaresoft for a while. And they were like, you know what? Fuck you guys. Yeah. And it gets crazy too. Like, you know, to cap the whole thing off, it's so insane that we almost got fucking, we almost got the Nintendo PlayStation. Yeah. The D, the dis, Nintendo 64 disk drivers or did it? Well, there was different. a disk drive, but like originally before like the N64 was going to come out, like they worked with Sony. And like, if you can even look it up, there's like actual prototype models of like oh, the yeah. Nintendo PlayStation. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. And like it was God. going to be like Sony and Nintendo were going to make a thing together, and imagine how amazing that mm-hmm. would have been, just because of how great the PS One is, how great the N sixty four is, yeah. all that in one system. I don't know. It's like would it have been the same? You know, probably not. I think like the Sony was a little bit more, um, or a little bit less lenient for their developers to kind of do stuff that they wanted to. That, it would have been interesting if that so. if somehow we had the Nintendo thing of that time did have this wider library because another thing I couldn't help but be like I, I I had it's a great game anyways but when I played Pokemon Puzzle League I was like oh my god mm-hmm. this is a nice looking little 2D video game I haven't seen one of these in a while it is like right, right. 90 or 90 you know, I know it was this new frontier but I feel like on the PlayStation, you still would get, you know, Symphony of the Night is an obvious example, but you know, well, I, I saw something recently games that were really good. Like Symphony of the Night, like I mean, we look back on it like very fondly now, but it was like reviewed very poorly when it came mm-hmm. out because like it wasn't 3D. I bet, like, right? It just, it was, what it, is this old lazy, shit? Right? Yeah, yeah, cheap looking, but it's like at the same time, like, and I think I, I, there, I forget which game it was. Maybe it was. uh Harvest Moon 64 or something because I reviewed a game or two that had still had 2D sprites in, in the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. And it was like in 3D backgrounds. And I think like, you know, Paper Mario is another mm-hmm. one. Like that mix of like 2D sprites and 3D backgrounds like is such a fucking chef's kiss. Like beautiful. I love it. Yeah, look. yeah. It's like integrating the two styles because it's like certain games like just look better that way. And it just, I don't know. I love those that. two that it's, you I'm said saying, are yeah. two that I want to play after this is over. So I can like, just like vibe mm-hmm. out on them and not be like, what am I going to say? Well, when have I played this enough? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> those two especially are just like gorgeous um, and fun. And I will say Harvest Moon 64 reminds me that's probably, unless I'm forgetting something, which I don't know if I am the closest thing and it's great, but like, there's not too much in like the sim. There's some wonky strategy stuff like Starcraft 64 and stuff, but you know, there's no like roller coaster yeah. tycoon or Sim City 2000 or something like that could have been theme park that was on the PS one. You know, there's not a lot of fun, like yeah. sit back and kind of chill, uh, you know, like sim strat game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like the N64 had 
Like it was like I, I it was definitely dry in RPGs yeah. and certain games like that. But it had like when it comes to like uh I would say maybe platformers or 3D adventure games and stuff like that, like the big 3D sprawling games, mm-hmm. I feel like we're typically almost always better on the N64. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. Like PS1 had the RPGs and you know I mean, Metal Gear Solid was amazing, yeah. but like a lot of stuff, like the big open 3D stuff was almost always better for sure. than 64. And then I've, I've learned just from, you know, getting on YouTube sometimes for stuff that uh, sometimes though, well, quite often if it matters, which it doesn't, but PS1 would get, would hit you with a, ni- a much nicer cut scene, <laughs> you know, oh, <laughs> if yeah, that's your yeah, cup of tea yeah. at all, <laughs> is that that's just something I'm playing like the army men games or something. And then I get on YouTube mm-hmm. like, Ooh, mine doesn't look like that, but whatever, you know? Yeah. Or Tony Hawk's like missing some of the soundtrack or something. Like, yeah, Tony Hawk was rough for me, and and I, I have to, I put Tony Hawk one pretty low, and it's I apologize to Tony Hawk in it, so I think that you know it's 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 the version of the game I fell in love with, but it's just rough, and there's the stuff of mm-hmm. like, of course it's a little rough, but then it's like, yeah, but you know the soundtrack we all love, those songs loop after sixty seconds on the N sixty four. It's it's no way to live, it, you know. It's and was that like was that cartridge space issues or was it copyright? I, I feel like it was probably space. I think right? it's space just because musically, I think it everyone else doing space. discs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then even on, I, I figured if it's two or three, they just do like you know, it's like five of the songs out of the twenty or something, and okay. things like that. So they, they held back once in a while. But I do agree with you that by and large, a lot of the games that are available on both have, uh, yeah, pretty cool. And one or two of them. Even like you were saying, there's not a lot of RPGs. So then you play Mega Man 64 and you're like, well, you know, by default, this is one of the best fucking RPGs on the system. You yeah. Know? Same with Paper Mario. Paper Mario. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So, you know, it's all just it's all perspective. Try playing all 300 games. Then tell me. <laughs> tell me <laughs> yeah, you get a real perspective. Yeah, you can really <laughs> next time you complain about like, oh, this game is aged. Well, compare it to fucking like uh, Rat Attack. Yeah. I will just say two more. Th- truly the truly the super size me of N64 games. <laughs> yes, right. Is this article? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what. Yeah, like you, you're not supposed to play these games every day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> like we're we're like throwing up. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm in a parking lot. Like, oh, uh, yeah. and then played too much Wave right. Racer. And every every time yeah. every time Mark DMs you, can you do one more? Go, oh, I have to say yes. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah. Like I, yeah, you would come out like you'd be like, hey, you want to do these ones? Because I, I was like, hey, I'll do as many as I can. Mm-hmm. And there was times where I was like, I'd be like, I think I'm done. But then I'm like, I'll do some more. Yeah. And I, I really did feel like Morgan Spurlock <laughs> in that moment. You know, I'm like, <sighs> supersize me. Right. Uh, there's no games with McDonald's mascots on the N64, sadly. That that had dried up. It's by a then, shame. But yeah. Um, that is a shame. I, I, uh, before, let, let's, uh, yeah, I, I, before we get to any final thoughts on this, I want to um, kind of wrap things up sure. here. Uh, well, obviously, guys, if you're listening, Check out Hard Drive. A lot of good stuff on there, obviously. But keep an eye out for this list. It's going to be out very, very soon. If it's not out already at the time of this episode's release. And then once it's out, if uh, I may interject, I'm sure we're going to be putting up, you know, the Instagram posts and turning. It's a ton of shit. So it'll turn into, you know, we'll just tweet mm-hmm. out random ones. And I think things like that. So it'll definitely be if, if, if you're keeping the hard drive, hopefully it's hard to miss is all I wanted, you know. Yeah, that that's going to be amazing. So definitely check that out. And uh Mark, if you can tell people uh, where they can find you on the internet, where they can find 50% Fresh and all that good stuff. Yeah, definitely. So just, uh, God, it's like the, forever. It was like, the best thing's Twitter. Uh, and I guess it still is by default, you know? That's still where I'm hanging out. <laughs> but uh, It still appears to be up. Cool, yeah, yeah. Let me check before yeah, but you can find me. Uh, my Twitter's Mark uh, underscore Roebuck, R-O-E-B-U-C-K. Um, follow also 50% Fresh, just the numbers, 50% Fresh, just like it sounds, no tricks. Uh, we put up episodes every other Tuesday. Um, I'm thinking so unless plans change, I don't think they will. Though, but Deep Blue Sea, we just released. We're going to work on Batman Forever next. Who is not excited about that one? Oh, yeah. Um, cool. And uh, yeah, that, that sounds good for me, I think. Thank you guys for having me again. Always fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, anytime. Um, and yeah, let's get to some listener voicemails. Uh, 312-788-7361. Or you can always send us an audio file to Thought Cops Podcast at gmail.com 312-788-7361 hit it hey you guys hey thought cops community and organization and podcast sorry this is max racer i what's up max to leave a, hello uh, a question for the uh, podcast so Hey, you guys are probably talking over me right now. All right, anyway. <laughs> um, so I think it's cool that you're, uh, you have the guest on. He works for a company called Hard Drive Mag, or that's his company. Uh-huh. I was wondering about advertising and remakes. Like, 
You know, I worked for a zine, and I, I, I think Hard Drive Mag is also like a zine, and I was wondering whether advertising has to do anything with, like, the remakes that are popular now and whether that has to do anything with, like, what we do even. So, all right, that's my question. Thank you. Wait, did he say wait, remakes? Did I miss something? Re- Mark, remakes, what, uh, can you reiterate what you think his question was and then answer it for us, please? Thank you. I'm willing to do my best. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Advertising and remakes were, were is the crux of this here. Uh, wondering about advertising and the role they play in these remakes, as in, you know, I know like Resident Evil 4 is a big one. And, oh, and stuff oh, like that. oh. So, um, that said, I don't know all the way about is it is it the advertising of uh, like how do you advertise a remake or? Well, I I think like I don't know if this is exactly sure. what he's asking, but I um like I I know if you guys haven't checked out Minus World yet, definitely I think that's awesome. It's I I love writing for Minus mm-hmm. World just as much as Hard Drive because it's like it's the same sort of rhythm and flow as writing these N sixty four reviews. It's sincere but a little cheeky. I mean, ultimately, and- this list is probably a minus world content and it took me a minute to That's realize I, that but then yeah. once you think about it you go well yeah it's exactly what it is because this isn't satirical i'm not writing under a pen name you about, fucking goof yeah right it's like i these are genuine thoughts just couched in irony and jokes like we live our lives you know yeah and i i did uh because i um like some of the stuff we put out for minus world is like it's a lot more tied to releases of games and stuff like i did uh i wrote an article about like minecart madness mm-hmm. Because you guys remember like on the Super Nintendo and a lot of games back then, it seemed like yeah. a ton of games was like, and here's a level where you ride around in a mine yeah. cart and yeah. jump yeah, on you'd stuff. Yeah, you get a snow level, you'd get a mine cart level. Get, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's there's and they were always a lot of fun because it's like, oh, here's the fast, crazy part of the game. Even if it's some an of RPG. the best and some of the worst levels in Mario, uh, Mario, uh, Donkey Kong 64. Yeah. And like, yeah, Mario, Mario RPG even had that Final Fantasy 6. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff. So mm-hmm. I wrote an article about that because I saw the Resident Evil 4 remake had a, a more significant section of the game with like crazy mine carts. Mm. And I was like, you know, I pitched the idea to Ryan, the editor at Minus World, and I wanted to do this mine cart article. I'm like, yeah, and I think that it's having a comeback because of uh, Resident Evil 4 and the game was coming out like in a day or two. And he's like, okay, can you get it to me by the time the day if the game comes out in like a day or two? I'm like, oh shit. And I just started writing mm. it immediately. And it was like, because like you want to have like, I, you know, I think we wanted to have like Resident Evil 4 pop in that headline title and yeah. the article because it's like people are going to be looking up this game the day it right, comes out right. mm-hmm. and it's like and here's the goofy take we have on it you know yeah. so um it doesn't seem like that's as much of a concern for like the hard drive side of things but i think like minus world and even more to an extent probably other video game journalist websites mm-hmm. it's very much tied to that seo game of like Okay, what's coming out and when? But you're right. I hope that kind of I yeah. hope that kind of answers your question, at least from my perspective. Um, yeah, and I can say too, it's interesting. Like um, from the you know the satire at hard drive, which is our bread and butter, and you know this minus world is is in the grand scheme of things a newer thing that we're exploring still. And Ryan's doing a great job, and we're having fun doing all that shit. Um, but like with satire, so much of it is topical. If you have a hit, and so sometimes a game release can be a kind of like you can kind of anticipate this topicality. But mm-hmm. satire jokes aren't always funny about a game coming out. It's funny if a game comes out and is getting bad reviews or is or or everyone's just talking about it and there's like more of a story there. So it almost is more of that reaction to what's happening. But I do think in minus for like you're right. Like you just predict, like, oh yeah, of course everyone's gonna be talking about Resident yeah, Evil when that, it comes out, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. Like minus world is more like predictive, but like hard drive is a lot more reactionary. Because yeah. like when, when like it's like even when there was a Nintendo Direct, there was like a pitch thread for like the thing. So like a lot of us are like watching the Nintendo Direct and like pitching headlines mm-hmm. as it's happening and Jeremy will be like hey write this one up now write this one up now mm-hmm. you know and it's like more like as it's happening we kind of have a funny take on it right instead of like yeah right so minus world is us rolling up our sleeves and being like we're gamers man here's what we fucking think yeah <laughs> get ready for this yeah. you're gamers and you're not embarrassed to say so but uh hard drive is you're a little embarrassed yeah, yeah I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. being yeah. ironic oh, about yeah it. yeah there's, there's, there's layers deep the real us right. back there somewhere. <laughs> uh, but I I hope that answers Max's question. I got, I, did, did you guys think we missed anything with that? No. Okay. Moving on. Next voicemail. Playing now. Guys, I'm getting worried. It's really starting to settle in for me that the Nintendo 64 is losing the console award. <laughs> I think about it all day and night. It's fucking me up. What can we do 
to combat this, to get the Nintendo heads back on our side? What can we do about the Sega shitheads and the, the piss cast and the, the, the x phone? What can we do to bring our boy back? And why are the Wokies to blame? Let me know what you think. Give me your stink. Thank you. I, I think I, the Wokies well, are to blame because they're to blame for everything. I, mean, I was going to say, first of all, I think DK has gone woke, so maybe that's a problem. Well, you know, we're talking about the DK cartridge, and I was thinking about like the WrestleMania 2000 cartridge, the Wokies. You can't, you can't paint a cartridge black anymore. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> 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 that, that took me a second. You, you wouldn't get away with that. <laughs> you're, you're just like, all right, here we go. Let's see if this works. <laughs> so sad. Uh, no, I, 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 I feel you, caller. I feel you. I, I, I worry for it too. Like I said, I, 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 you know, certain series like Final Fantasy and Street Fighter are moving to the PlayStation, mm-hmm. you know, and arguably having a, a bigger storage size because of the multiple discs. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting here like, oh my God, why did Nintendo go cartridges? We're losing the console war. Well, you know, and they're, I'm going to get know, made fun of thing, at school. Mm-hmm. The whole thing with those other, uh, those other consoles is it's like, Oh, you want more titles because you think that diversity is inherently good? Whatever happened to those old fashioned, you know, Mario? You know, you you play Mario, you play Tetris, you play Mario. You you maybe play Donkey Kong. You know, you put maybe put Mario and Donkey Kong in some carts. Maybe have a party. Like that's really what America was founded on. Was you know a, a man and a monkey driving some cars and having a party. Right. Maybe playing tennis with a weird greek guy uh you know and everybody oh uh, we'll go to playstation because of diversity when has that ever helped anybody you know do anything you know i feel like grant you should be recording this from like the inside of a truck with your sunglasses on (laughs) yeah uh some chewing tobacco in your mouth you know, when is, uh, pretend there's a, I'm in a car. Yeah. Uh, when has, you know, diversity, you know, talk about, talk, talk about uh, your freedoms. We got a, a, a bandicoot. I, I don't even know what that is. Not American. Y'all Not American. see, y'all see what they're trying to do with Spyro mm-hmm. going to Subway. That's what they want to teach our kids. You, a purple you see, damn uh, dragon. You, you see what, uh, oh, Final Fantasy is too good for the N64. Uh, who's this guy in Final Fantasy? This uh beta male guy who uh he has spiky hair and he talks about his feelings. Little sissy wrists. This is really who you his little sissy wrists. Uh, and he's carrying around this this big sword, but we all know that it's just it's made out of aluminum. Mm. Talk about we gotta save the environment. Fuck that and, shit. Let the Mako and, reactor go. Mm. And uh, Sephiroth is up there, you know, shirtless, looking all sexy, and we're, we're supposed to kill him, you know? Do you know what? I, he is sexy. Well, he is real sexy. I think if you look at the N64 library, if, if Final Fantasy VII is like, uh, the, the themes of it are like protecting the environment and everything else, uh, Blast Core is a great game Commies. on N64. <laughs> uh, you <laughs> yeah. just blow shit up, and I have to imagine create a lot of pollution. That is nothing but heavy yeah. machinery blowing up industrial buildings. Uh, so there's your answer, I think. That's why I got shut down. Fucking emissions. Yeah. And you were saying, well, too, I guess we gotta go, gotta go woke. Exactly. The library too. It's funny. You know, you're right about it. It's just like, yeah, PlayStation had a thousand games, but like, you're only going to own like 10 or 20, right? You yeah. just need, you need How Mario. Games you, you need Mario. Yeah. You need Danky Kang. You need a little, sh- you need Zorro. You need though. a little shoebox full of games is all. Yeah. Absolutely. That's all Absolutely. you need. Also, the cartridges could go loose. You know, like when we were all kids, we were in no condition to take care of CDs. Bucket. Yeah, yeah, you put it in your pocket, <laughs> you bring it to your friends, that's it. You go through that that chase of like, this game's in that case, that means this this game must be in that case, you know, like, you right. retrace yeah, your yeah. steps. Or you don't beat a boss in Zelda, and it's like, insert disc two. You no, know, you just put the fucking cartridge in, you play the game, you get to the you beginning. You blow on it if it end. doesn't work, right. and that's it. Right. Yeah, that's all you had to do. Simpler times. Anyway, 312-788-7361, or send an email to thoughtcopspodcast at gmail.com. As I said before, we are going to be going on hiatus for a little bit, a little while. But Work we're doing on a st- couple things, make it bigger, better, stronger, faster. Yeah, we, we do still want to hear from you guys. So in in our uh, absence, leave us some good stuff because mm. we're going to come back with episode three hundred. Is the next episode? Oh, dang. 
We're going to do something special for that. We I'm going to quite- kick Kevin into a well and yell, this is Sparta. It's going to be hilarious. Yeah, we're, we're going to do a whole, like, <laughs> play all the different... Me and Grant are going to play every character in the movie 300. Oh, is the, hi- is the hiatus so you guys can get the 300 up. shape? Is that what's going on? Yeah, Full yeah. Just yeah. Like- yeah. Eat chicken breast. You mentioned training. I understand meals. why you're training at two places now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's all so, for this episode. It's going to be great. Yeah. That's why I had to let go of one job so I could, uh, you know, focus, focus on getting on in this shape. On 300 themed podcast episode. Yeah. It's going to be rough, but it's going to be worth Congratulations it. Congratulations on also, 300 guys, like episodes, said, guys. That's really awesome. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's been a long journey, it's really but cool. it's, uh, yeah, I, I, it's always fun to kind of do something different for the... Uh, the, uh, the milestones. I'm say, and, yeah, the milestones. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, totally, totally. Uh, anyway, if that inspired you, like I said, give us a call when we're gone. Also, uh, support the show because we're still going to be putting out Fire Bros. We got that Mario Bros. episode coming out soon. If it's not out already, right. uh, the Mario Bros. movie. Patreon.com. Ideas for those two. But yeah, yeah. We, like that's like we like I still kind of want to keep it that because I, I think like we've really hit a rhythm with Fire Bros. now where I'm like, I want to be doing these as much as possible. Cool. Doing uh, one piece of media per episode was the smartest idea we could have possibly come up with. I feel with. so fucking stupid we didn't do it sooner. We should have did that for six years. And I don't know. Because, Mark, we used to do like three or four things like once a month. Yeah. We, did we a, used to do five on occasion. Oh, my God. We would do, just it, review five crazy. like movies and TV shows mm-hmm. and albums and shit like that. And it's Very like stupid. one. Very, yeah. one. It can turn into two. Right. Yeah. That's I find that too. Like we generally and there's you know no wrong way to do it, but. We'll do like a movie and talk about an hour about a movie. I could see we're doing, you know, a lot of things. I don't know. Would, it adds yeah, up. Yeah. Would you feel it adds like up and you don't get to you it. have a long episode, but also you feel like you didn't say everything because you covered so many things or something. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And now we cut it down to one and it's still a long episode. Of course. Of course. So it's just right. like it doesn't fucking right. matter. Right. Yeah. But it's a great, yeah. it's a great conversation. You know, no observation right. left behind. Yeah. But like I said, patreon.com slash thought cups. Want to give a shout out to one of our newest patrons this week. Daniel Murray. Thank you, Daniel. Danny. Danny boy. Uh, Mark, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, sure. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. And thank you guys for listening. Uh, we'll miss you, but we'll see you soon It'll on be the soon. other side. See you, Space Cop. <laughs> <laughs>